United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Kathy will now call the roll. Councilmember Helfrich? Here. Councilmember Holmstrom? Here. Councilmember Willis? Here. Councilmember Storm? Here. Councilmember Cramblett? He will be here shortly. Councilmember Zerfing? Here. And Mayor Masters? Here. Thanks, Kathy. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a work session of the Council. Um, Cascade Locks tonight. Uh, we have a number of items on our agenda. Uh, primarily uh, is uh, orientation to city finance. And uh, here to lead this up is Marianne, our financial officer. Um, and it looks like you have an agenda, and, and I'm going to let you go through uh, each of those items. Okay. Right now. All right. Thank you, Lance. Or Mayor Lance, I'm sorry. Um, what Paul and I had worked up uh, was to go through the financials um, page by page. If you had any questions, um, I think it's important for all council to understand the funds that are involved in the financials. I know some of you do, but maybe some of you don't. And so I just want to briefly go through that. It's not going to be much more than five, ten minutes, unless you have questions. I'm, I'm really going to kind of rush through it. Um, I did. I do want to quantify, though, that the reports that you have that we're going to go through, the sample reports, um, no way reflect the balances in the financials. I don't want you to get the impression that these are the totals in here. Okay. Um, I haven't verify them and I don't want that relationship out there yet until I have verified that. The financials that you have in front of you tonight is the updated for November and please dis discard your last ones that you got because I did have an adjustment that I found that I had to do and so um, please take these home and discard the other one that you took home two weeks ago. Okay. Um, in the general fund, which is our first fund, I do want to stipulate that the general fund supports seven different departments. Um, so on the first page, and I'm sorry, Gail, I didn't number these pages. I That's okay. I can go slow and I'll keep But it. I will uh, get that numbering down real quick. Um, like I said, the general fund supports seven departments. Could, um, you, could you just help us out on sure. which... I had I'm several on, different papers. I'm on the financial report, the 42-page financial report. At the report. top, what is it? The top it of the says first page. revenues with comparison to budget for five months okay. ending November 30th. Okay, thank you. You bet. Could someone pull that out for, for Tom when he walks in? Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Okay, no problem. Just want to make sure we're all on. Our revenues <laughs> um, that are generated for, for the general fund uh, primarily comes from internal payments of the inter from the enterprise fund, um, some state uh, revenues, cigarette tax, uh, also state revenue sharing, but for the most part, and property tax, but for the most part, that is our revenue base. We don't have too many fees that the citizens pay, uh, copy fees, fax fees, uh, information service fees, but they are not, they do not generate the revenue does property tax internal payments. Um, the next page, the second page, you'll see is the administration charges. <coughs> that is, the administration is the office upstairs here. That's uh, the, the clerk, or the city recorder, uh, the front desk, the uh, accountant, <coughs> and myself, Excuse and me. also the city administrator. Uh, that is what the administration department is. The next page, of the third page, you'll see the planning department on the top. That is um, one of the seven departments that the um, general fund supports. And depending on the type of um, planning that goes on or construction, then this is the revenues you see gener generated that is an in and out. We don't usually get too many um, fees associated with <coughs> revenue enhancements. So this is mainly an in and out. 
The next department is property. Um, property department is primarily this building. Um, if they did work at the sewer plant, the water, the, the maintenance for those is charged to those departments. Property is usually this building and the grounds around this building. Um, the next one is the beautification department. This department was uh, created by our budget committee last year uh, to take over the flowers and the seasonal employment, uh, public works employment for watering the flowers. Uh, so we, um, we they, they asked that this department be created. Uh, the museum is the cost of operating the museum with personnel approximately five uh, months out of the year, May through September. Could, could we back up for just a second? Sure. The beautification. Mm -hmm. Is this okay to ask questions? Yes, yeah, please do. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> what, what, how was that created? Because I know that there's a tourism and beautification committee created by ordinance, but this fund was created by the budget committee? Yes. So, so it wasn't created by a res resolution or ordinance or, or anything no, like that. So it was just the budget committee? Mm -hmm. Established the funds. Yes, they took the the contract uh, landscape flowers plus the labor that tourism was was paying for and moved it into the general fund to pay for it. Okay, so the monies were taken out of general fund for this. Yes. Okay. And all these first few that you're going through are all general funds. This is all general fund. Right? Okay. Yeah. Everybody understand that the general fund supports seven departments, um, so that you understand. But it's just, it's just the, um, I just want to make sure we get that point, though, that there's a an ordinance that creates the Tourism and Beautification Committee yes. that's operating, that's not operating out of the general fund. That's correct. But there's a beautification fund. Department. A beautification department, department that is now operating out of the general fund. Yes. Okay. And the next one is museum. As I said, we, we pay for personnel to operate the museum five months out of the year. Uh, government and community relations, that's primarily council. And then any community relations that we need to do uh, for the council, if you want to go to training, we have mo we had money in the budget for training. Yeah. Um, Sorry to do this again, but can we back up to the museum? Yes. So. It, when you talked about planning, you talked about it's sort of a an in and out. Most of the planning. Yes. Um, is that also true of museum? How does no. museum generate its revenue? Is it general fund or is it it's income from the museum? It's general fund dollars um, that pays for the personnel. Now, the museum does take in donations during the five months, and we do run those donate donations through our books. We receive it in, and we pay it back. They have a fund that they use to buy supplies, to buy um, museum artifacts, things that they want to enhance the museum with. That's what they use that money for. It's to mainly buy things. You know, if somebody came, hey, I'd like to, um, you know, I have these arrowheads, maybe they need to purchase them. I don't know, but, but they have used it to buy their supplies on they need all cleaning supplies, uh, anything that they need there. That's what they use that money for. Now that's been set up for many years. Um, Do, uh, that was created years ago based upon an audit recommendation that even though they manage the money, there ought to be a, uh, a, a track of the revenue and the expense through the city. So I'm just trying to clarify, the revenue that comes in from donations for people visiting, mm -hmm. what, how, how is that reflected? Is that reflected? That's here? not reflected in this department. That's, that goes that into something goes else. That goes into another department. <coughs> so similar to what we just talked about with beautification. Yes. Okay, it, there's it's another actually department. actually a museum trust fund is what it's titled, is museum trust. So, so for personnel expenses, we're taking out a general fund. Yes. To pay for our... Those expenses for personnel and utilities of the museum. Yes, okay. So that's so. There's another divide there. There is a divide. Yes. 
between other funds and general fund, but we're using general fund to pay for mm -hmm. that same. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any questions on the government and community relations as to what that department actually pays for? Okay, the next program um, <coughs> is recreation program. Again, we, we pay for the recreation program, we pay for the, the activity coordinators, the summer rec director, um, also the supplies that they need um, comes out of general fund. Now, they do charge a um, small activity fee, it's like a quarter a night, and those revenues come in and they are reflected in the uh, revenue. As of right now, uh, their year-to-date total is $117. So it, it's not a, by any means able to support itself. Any questions on that program? Okay. Uh, the final department that the general fund uh, has is the police. Uh, this was the department where the OEO <coughs> officer was paid out of, but uh, when it was taken off, then it's just for the contract of the uh, police that the county has provided. Has that department changed its revenue source, or has it always been constantly paid through the general fund? It's always been paid through the general fund. Any questions on the general fund? Okay. Um, so you said, you said seven. We have seven different departments, yeah. Okay. Unless I counted wrong. Oh. Unless I counted wrong. Right. I'm just trying to make sure I have it in my head. I counted eight, so I just, I, I don't, if I have it wrong. I don't take administration. You I, don't, okay. I, I That's didn't. So if you add administration, it's okay. Yeah. Um, the next one is the systems development revenues and system development charges. construction, um, any houses being built, if they connect to sewer, water, there's an SPC charge that all um, new, new housing and new buildings must pay, and that's where the response would be in the SPC. We currently have, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, have a parks, water, and sewer, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Of SPC that we can collect. And that fee is set by resolution. This one is um, state gasoline tax is its major source of income. It has, uh, if you go to the next page, operations department, that is um, part of the city administrator's wage comes out of that, and then of course your <coughs> utility worker one, utility worker two, and public works superintendent. This is primarily Public Works, um, one section of the Public Works Department. This week. Any questions on street? I, I uh, yeah, one. Uh -huh. I, I don't see the Public Works Director charging time, so okay. I guess you don't do much there. Yes, well, the, the public works, uh, due to the change of from a employee to contracted service, you'll see that April, May, and June, he was uh, put into contract services miscellaneous because there was, okay, because it wasn't <coughs> budgeted, so it was charged to miscellaneous. It wasn't budgeted as a public works superintendent. Starting July, uh, he does have a line item contract service PW superintendent, and that's where he's being charged as of July, okay. as of the new budget. And and can you clarify, just roughly, 
what his compensation is for how much time? Yes, I can. He, uh, he currently is, uh, has a budget of $35,000 in, in the line items. It comes from property, street, water, and sewer. Um, he is paid $100 uh, basic fee rate per visit plus any testing, repair, expense to the facilities that need to be. Um, and then his any additional work is $40 an hour. His hours that uh, he is to be here is an average between 8 and 20 hours per week. And those are very. Those are what? Very. No set dates. Well, there was set dates Tuesdays and Thursdays, but uh, we sometimes don't see him on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sometimes he'll be here Wednesdays or Fridays. Emergency services. Uh, this is the department where fire and ambulance um, are charged to. Uh, we get property tax. 42% uh, of the property tax that comes into the city is transferred to uh, fire EMS or the emergency service. Um, we also get med life contracts uh, from them, or from the Hood River County. Rural fire protection from uh, the uh, what we call South Bank customers, that's the uh, Wyatt, yeah, Dodge um, Dodge area. And it says there the miscellaneous income to the budget of 2000, but the year to date was actual $132. What is that source? Miscellaneous income is burning from it, yeah. most of it. And because of the burn ban that lasted for so long this year, I'm sure that's down. Um, but they'll start picking up. We've already got enough for this winter time. They're starting to burn. So. <coughs> Next page is your um, expenses for emergency services. The next one is the Administration Department of Emergency Services. That encompasses, again, City Administrator, Finance Officer, County Clerk, and Office Assistant. Uh, what, what this covers is the processing of uh, the bills, because they do get, uh, we do bill for services on the utility bill. Uh, we also field phone calls and, of course, um, minutes meeting. And this is a percentage basis. On, on EMS. Next page is the 911 emergency telephone. Uh, this is an in and out. We receive tax money um, and we immediately cut a check to the county. So it doesn't sit too long here. If you go to two more pages, you'll see grant revenue. The only thing we have on the books this year for grants is the thousand dollars from the uh, Department of Land Conservation. That is a planning grant. Um, should we re require planning services, we can use that thousand dollars to pay for our planning. And I believe this is a two-year grant, so if we don't use it this year, is that right, Kathy? We can go for yeah. next year. Any questions on grants? You'll turn a couple more pages, see tourism revenues. This is your tourism and beautification um, for the ordinance. Um, their primary income is uh, room assessment, TRT tax. 30, 30%. Yes, 30%. Mm -hmm. Their next page would be their expenditures, um, their marketing, their news and publications, any advertising uh, they do. Uh, we also contribute to the fireworks. 
harvest time. Hey, I, I got a question. Mm -hmm. You know, we went through and uh, revised the resolution that covered expenditures for departments. Mm -hmm. And tourism is covered by an ordinance. But if I recall, that ordinance uh, states that their expenditures are to be approved by council. Uh, but I don't remember in any of our council meetings reviewing any of their expenses to approve them in, in the last couple months. The ones that I know that have been approved are, have been approved through contracts, like the flowers, the web design, um, those are the ones, and the, the, um, the concert that we had down here. Um, those are the ones that I know that you approved. As far as approving any advertising or, or brochure, you would, would approve the brochures because it's probably over the city administrator's limit, but if it was not, no, they have not done <coughs> So I don't have the right ordinance in front of me, but is it written that the city administrator can approve amounts I, for tourism, or is it written? Has to come to council. That's correct. So section seven of ordinance two fifty nine says all funds budgeted and appropriated by the city of Cascade Locks for tourism and beautification promotion shall be expended in the same manner as our other city funds. Oh, okay. So there's probably some ambiguity there. Yeah. Um, what <laughs> what uh, Section 6 says is the actual application management and direction of the program of tourism and beautification promotion planned by the committee shall be the responsibility of the city council. Okay. Various elements of which they may choose to delegate to city officers or others. Okay. S so another layer of ambiguity there, but it, that, that I believe that's what you're referring to. Yeah. That the, right. the sole responsibility of the, the whole tourism and beautification program rests with the city council, right. unless it's delegated. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted a clarifying question. When I'm looking at the department operations department and I look under the training and others, it shows there's a five hundred dollar budget for that item and for training travel, there's $3,000 budgeted for the tourism club. Yeah. So for pro professional training for city staff, you only allocated $500 for all of staff. So if you have a class in Portland and to pay for it and the class would be $100 or $200, your class would pretty much eat up the training budget for the city for one person. Where it's budgeted for $3,000 for... Talking about the government and community relations or work? I was looking just in uh, training, um, travel and training. In which fund? In um, operations, I believe it was. Operations department. Oh. I, was, I lost that. But if I understand what your question is, yes. Travel and training, you have to have a $500. Yeah, your budget $500. $500. Out of, your, out of the city staff department mm -hmm. for travel and training. And tourism has $3,000 for travel and training. Um, one thing I do want to note that the travel and training for city staff is usually spread between all the departments, okay. uh, not tourism, but all of the other departments, because when we go for training, we are actually learning things that will benefit all departments. All the departments. Okay. So um, it is spread out. But then if it's like, if it's just travel and training for city works, that still comes they're only the, the it's employees. Usually, if it's just for public works, works it's, it's, it's usually charged to them. For them. For but them you can draw, but you would, part of that training get drawn out for you, though, a percentage mm -hmm. of that. So really, they could get short of a percentage of that if it's, because it's divided out. It, it's fuzzy now, but yeah. it's, yeah, okay. It's fuzzy now. Randy? On uh, Marianne, on, on uh, tourism, you have a beginning balance of $50,000. That's from the prior year, yeah. I would assume. Current revenues. And you build the budget, and you have ninety-two thousand total available. And then on the expenditure side, that's the part I don't understand. On the expenditure side, we're we're budgeted to, to shoot the wad. Yeah. 
Yes, you are. Rather than having another uh, cash carryover into the next year. You're actually looking at a, um, you are actually correct, I don't see a contingency in there. It's there. Oh, there 7,930. So if you were, in, in my mind, if you were wanting to save money, you would have made that contingency more. You have to have a balance of revenues and expenditures. And you can't balance a ending fund balance. As the a, city does as not. A line item. The city does not. Okay. But that's where contingency but that's why usually comes contingency in. Contingency is because it's used for that. Because that that usually is carried forward. So it mind. kind of overinflates the monies that are available because you're really your current yes, revenues. They're, they're using their beginning balance. Right. Uh, they're budgeting in, in the budget. to use and it. And this has been going on for Not years. Not necessarily right. do they use it, but they are budgeting to use it. Right? I want to keep that in, in your mind that it's budgeted, but we don't. We try not to use it all. And just because it's there doesn't mean we can spend it. You have to look at, and I stress that you have to look at your revenues. If you're only bringing in. Twenty thousand dollars in revenue, you should not be spending any more than what you're bringing in. Okay, you don't bank on what you're going to bring in in the next month. You've got to watch your revenues versus your expenditures. But as far as us coming up with a system to monitor accounts with this new, you know, software program that's going to be an asked of all of us, what what do we want to look at? Um, mm -hmm. We're always going to look like, oh, we're not spending what we had budgeted. It's always going to look good. But in reality, we want to plan on fifty thousand dollars just to pick a number. That's 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 rolling between the budgets. You should always and, have and we should really be looking at a forty thousand dollar budget rather than a ninety two thousand yeah, dollar budget to, do to to monitor it. To see and that's what contingency does. It is if you say, oh, we're not going to spend twenty thousand dollars, we're going to roll that forward or whatever, or the fifty. Mm -hmm. Then that's where I would put the money so that it's not touched. And And this, this is kind of an important point that I think, and hopefully you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's important that we stress here that the budget is not a precise document, that this is, these are going to be actual expenditures. Sometimes, we, and, and revenue, sometimes we lose sight of that and think, well, if it's the budget, then that's what, exactly what's going to happen. The budget is always an estimate. It's a plan for the whole year, and things happen throughout the year. You don't get the revenues you think, or you get more revenues than you think. But but as we go through, as we start going into the budget process, we, we have to keep that in mind. We're setting a plan for how the city is going to collect revenue and uh, expend funds, but it's just a plan. It's not it's not a precision of this is exactly what's going to happen. That is correct. There's, there's, this is just a plan. It's not a guarantee. There's nothing. It's a plan for um, Council and, and department heads and, and employees to see this is where our plan is, but if things don't go right, this plan will be changed. Or if things go better than expected. Right. Yeah. But even if things, and I want to stress, even if things go better than expected, just because we have a windfall of $100,000, it's not been budgeted, you yeah. can't spend it. You cannot do that unless it's been budgeted for. So that money is, is non touchable unless you do a supplemental. And uh, as I understand it, um, your budget runs from June to June, to June right? Like July to June. July to June, right? Mm -hmm. so, and so what happens to your business? And every department's going to be a little bit different. Where tourism is getting their money from TRT, TRT comes in on the, comes in quarter. Comes in right. So the reason you need the carryover, especially in tourism, is you can you spend all this money, which you can, but you're going to be out in June, and you've got to be waiting. Now you're waiting for money to come. You don't get any money between that and August. So between June and August, you can the next quarter you could be you could be broke. You can just spend all your money by the end of that thing, and then now you're waiting on money. So that, as I understand it, the the carryover, especially for like tourism, is because you have you're, you're bringing the money every three months, not. Every month, you gotta make sure that's you correct. Money. You only get it every every quarter. That is correct. So, so if you're 
you're really going to say that, there's no need for carryover if you know the money's, if you're being paid every week or whatever, you know, you know the money's going to be the next week. But in this one, you have to have some carryover because you only get another three months. Well, all, the funds, should, month all the funds should have carryover. All the funds should have to be in balance if your balance is here watching your budget right. You should always have to be in balance. Because? Because you never want to spend exactly what you budgeted. Always watching to save money. Huh. Um, you, you never spend it all. So, but with that, then if the, the, the beginning balance doesn't necessarily have to be very much, though, just as long as you got a, a, a well, beginning balance, right? In theory, yes. Huh. In theory. So you don't need a great big beginning balance. You just, the tourism may be a little larger one because they got to go where water, sewer, power, they're going to get a new another paycheck every yeah. month. Tourism's going to, it's going to be three months before they get a paycheck. So they got to, they may have to carry a little more carryover than anybody else may. So, and just a question to go along with what Tom said. Your carryovers. So, if you budgeted five hundred dollars for attorney fees, and they unexpectedly go over the five hundred dollar budget, you can pull from contingency to pay for those. No. No, contingency is used as an emergency, um, and I, I really try to stay with that theory as an emergency. If you overspend a line item, that, that, that's, and I say this okay, because the, the key for Oregon budget law is the category dollar. Your category is materials and services. If you overspend travel and training by 500, but you underspend special promotions by 500, you balance it. And, and that's the key, and that's what you want to watch. I don't want to overspend line items, but it's not the end of the world if you do that. You can save money in other lines, yeah. and then that's what you have to watch. Thank you. And, and just getting back to the the whole point about revenues being generated quarterly versus monthly, mm -hmm. which some of our I'm sure some of our funds will come to you know, they'll have that because the, you know utilities get monthly. get paid monthly. Mm -hmm. but general fund um, comes out. Of, we we uh, get monthly from the internal payments from the enterprise and, fund. And, and then there's also property, property tax, which is not going to be quarterly. Gonna, it might be quarterly. It might, it might be different depending on right. how, when people when choose people to pay. So, so a lot of the different funds have disparities of, of when the revenue comes in, which is which is why we, we have this complicated budget document, which helps us track those, um, those revenues as they come in. And, and we have to... As Marianne keeps saying, we have to continually keep an eye on the on the budget, which is just our plan for how we're going to expend that. Because there's always going to be a disparity in, in how that comes in. In the past, for example, in emergency services, part of our budget has been revenue generated. Well, then, as we've learned, the revenue that gets generated by billing um, ambulance calls, um, it's it's not monthly, it's not quarterly, it, you know, it's, it's in some cases, it's at the whim of an insurance company. And so the, it, so all, as, as we look at all our different sources of revenue, we have different expectations for when, when we're going to generate that, and all of those have to be factored into our, mm -hmm. to our budget. Gail, thanks for waiting. Uh, the, the old concept used to be that we want to try to ensure there was a bill beginning balance in each fund to allow for the necessary expenses to be paid out of beginning balance through first quarter. Because even like electrical, you know, their revenues, the bill goes out with the end of June. The end of the month. And so you wouldn't get those monthly revenues until July, July but they still have expenses in June before they received that year's revenue. And and if they had a discretionary projects in January, February, and March, then they needed to put more in beginning balance to cover that expense above and beyond their revenues or delay that expenditure until the revenues caught up. So the guideline old school we used to use was you know, the ideal is try to have 90 days of expenses in your beginning balance going forward.
Is that different than the front page where it shows a thousand dollars, and then it is different? This is just primarily donations. They call this, and I've got to change the wording on this financial. It's a museum trust fund. So it's the cash box where they donate. This people is donate. the money that is donated by tourists down at the museum, and they send it up to city hall. We count it. We run it through our books, and then we run it right back to them. Then on the what's on the front page? Then? The front page is their personnel expense and the utilities. I'm, I'm on your, uh, I'm talking about the administration fund, museum donations and grants is $1,000. Okay, they do give, I'm sorry, you're right, Randy. Um, they do give us $1,000 of their donation a year. Okay. I'm sorry, I forgot that, they do. They write us a check for $1,000 a year for what, for the help for paying yeah, their personnel and utilities. So that thousand is part of this twenty five hundred. Yes, you could say that. Okay. Because that's where the money comes from. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. I completely that one. Any more questions on museum? Okay. The next fund is cemetery fund. Uh, this is the revenues that we get in from. Sale of cemetery plots, opening, closing. Um, that's primarily where the revenue comes from. Hey, I got, a, I do got a question. I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but it, to me, the museum is a tourist activity. Uh, I just wonder why that's not paid out of tourism, or is that one of those things that isn't covered by touristy law? That's a good question. I don't know if it okay. is covered All right. by uh, So you don't remember any ORS discreet no. targeted discussion about that. Okay. Yeah. It's certainly something that, that we can discuss in our you know, on the okay. the boards and commissions because I think that there's also an ordinance that creates the museum committee. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. And in terms of the ORS that's that that governs expenditure of certain a certain percentage of transient room tax dollars one of the thi one of the things in there is facilities designed to attract tourists okay All right but buildings so it may be appropriate okay so I can't I mean I I think anyone that any lay person like I am that looks at a law and tries to interpret it for themselves runs the risk of you know misinterpreting it yeah Just well we got why sometimes people hire attorneys yeah well, and we got people out there to help us interpret it. Yes. Yeah. But it, it, either Gail or, or uh, Lance pointed out, 30% of the TRT money goes to the tourism fund. Yes. And 70% comes to the general fund that pays for the museum. So we just, so it is, you could say that it is paid for out of that, but not just separately. No. It's paid out of the general fund. Right. But set, but seventy percent of the TRT money goes to the general fund, That's right. which more than pays for a museum. It appears so. Well, just for, for dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cemetery. Any questions on cemetery? The update, upkeep of the cemetery. Cemetery Trust Fund. That's, this is the cemetery revenue, cemetery fund, not the trust fund. Okay, well, I, I guess I went to the expense. Okay, you have cemetery revenues, which is generated from uh, the opening, closing, and sale of the plot. Then you have cemetery expenditure. That is what um, we pay for public works to mow the grass or um, mm -hmm. water. 
whatever uh, opening and closing, if they have to take the, the backhoe down and, and utilize it, that's where these expenses are coming out of. It's not coming out of water, it's not coming out of sewer, right. it's out of cemetery. But towards the bottom of that page, you have the cemetery tr transfer to the cemetery trust fund. That's correct. What's the cemetery that? trust fund, as we get back into this, uh, as my understanding, that is a trust fund that eventually is going to hopefully take care of the cemetery. That is the purpose of the trust. It's, uh, Look, it's, actual, it's, it's to help, right. some, help take care of the cemetery so mm -hmm. that the city doesn't. I don't know if that's professional I, I care or... Well, I, I think or that fund was created, again, based upon legal and, yes. and audit requirements that if you have a cemetery that you have to put money away for its perpetual, perpetual care, care. Yeah. in case we so we'll later that. in this document we'll later see where that we'll six thousand years been building up and we have a larger fund a little six a little larger a little okay tom along that same thing which uh, was it through i think is that i also know i know there's part of this thing somewhere where um, to be able to purchase more land once your cemetery fills up. Are we putting away money that um, allows us to buy more land for to, if, if to expand the cemetery? And, and perhaps that's why the, the cemetery trust fund is small. I don't know what they use to purchase the extra land that they just purchased you know, years, several years ago when we were trying to run out of room. Um, and perhaps that is it, what the cemetery trust fund. There is a, an ORS that defines what you can use the trust money for, um, and I honestly have not looked at that. Um, yeah, yeah uh, no, the trust fund money was not used to purchase okay. that land. Okay. But I think, you know, looking at many years ahead, there should be a line item created for funding additional uh, cemetery expansion because I helped facilitate the last expansion and, and it was a Chinese fire drill to, to get it done because we were down to, I don't know, less than, I don't know, 10 or 15. Less than 10, I think. Uh, planters or, I mean, Plot. you know, bare pots. Mm -hmm. Plot. And, uh, and it was only because I'd worked with the guy that was doing the, doing the, uh, cul-de-sac there in the circle that uh, worked on the city's behalf to negotiate a purchase of one lot to expand it. But I don't know where we are and how many years we have of that location, but you know, when people start talking about the vision in 30 years or something like that, that, that may be an issue to start putting a little bit of money away every year so there is some money to do something. And currently there is no line item or anything to, to save for another possible land acquisition for another cemetery. Right. Okay. The next fund is the water fund. That is uh, revenues from basically water sales, water maintenance fees. Expenditures is for the public works to maintain our water system. And they hire a seasonal employee during the summer months to also uh, help offset the um, the mowing, the weed eating, the things that, that uh, public works can't get to. That is also part of this, this department. On the, on the revenue page, mm -hmm. um, it says from electric. Uh, electric pays us um, money to to uh, go out and read their electric meters. Mm -hmm. They have to pay for our employees uh, to do that. about 
two pages back is again our administration department. Um, again, that's the upstairs department that produces the, the bills, answers the phones, anything that, that has to do with uh, that fund is charged to this. Now again, that is a percentage. Um, it's not hour for hour, it's a percentage. Is questioned. It has been questioned by the budget committee uh, last year, and has been questioned by staff. Are those percentages good? Um, I think you'll find that uh, I raised that question with Paul last week. The percentage were done many, many years ago. I asked staff to attest to that perhaps those percentages are off. We just don't know. And um, I think Paul's going to address that in the upcoming. Okay, the next one is the seven hundred trust revenues that, that Randy had talked about. Um, we have a beginning balance from last year of seventy five hundred dollars. The budget committee did transfer more money into uh, the um, trust fund this year than usually about two thousand dollars, roughly. Uh, this year they've opted to do six. So again, it is a small trust fund. It does have a contingency of 13.9. So um, that's all this this question of 13,000 measures. After that is your sewer fund. These are revenues from sewer service fees. Out of this fund comes um, bond payments, the sewer bond fund and the OEDD loan fund for the um, payment of the sewer treatment plan. Do you know how much longer we have on that, on replacement or repayment? On the sewer bond 1998, uh, I believe that we can pay it off next budget year, but the uh, sewer Excuse me, the OEDD loan, if we can pay off next budget. The sewer bond fund, I believe, still has, I'm guessing, at least 10 years left, if not more. Okay. I'd have to look at the amortization chart. I, I just think that's something to look at sometime, because I can't remember. I, I was on council, I think, when we re engineered the sewer, but I can't remember if that had like a 20 year lifespan or. Or what? But it seems like if you project the end of a lifespan, one, you should start funding for something new, and mm -hmm. two, you should pay off target paying off the loans on the current plan. But just long range issue. I do know that the uh, auditor will put an amortization schedule in your audit that you get in February that will show uh, the years that we have. Okay. I'm not sure it goes clear to when we end. I'm not sure how many. There will be a schedule okay. there, and I know I gave it to him. So, so. Aren't we doubling down on these? Aren't we doubling or aren't we doubling down on one of these things? We had budgeted for it. Uh, I want to explain when you, it's not like you can send extra payment on a personal loan. You can't just mail in an extra payment. You have to schedule with them two months in advance. That did not happen this year. It got by us. So we, we've been doing it. We did it one year. We did it one year. We did budget it for this year, but the phone call didn't get in in October for them to bill us for it. And I tried sending them payment two years ago, and they sent it back because they couldn't do it. We have to call them and have them put it in the paperwork that they do. So that's on my calendar to do it next October so I don't forget to do it. And, and that's on the 98 bond? That's on the OEDD loan. Which is going to be gone next year. It should be. I, I believe we can pay that off next year. So we're not looking to do that on the, on the um, No, and on the uh, sewer bond fund, again, it's the same thing that comes out in December. And if you don't call them in October, we can't make an extra payment. So it's important that it get on a, on a 
the color file so that we can call and make those arrangements. In the past, we've looked into doing that, though, and apparently have. We did one time. Done. One time I was able to call and get it. And you did it for a year then? Pardon? You did it for a full year then? We did it one year, I called in and made the So we're doing double payments for that full year? We, what year. we did is we put an extra $40,000 on the home payment. You oh. can't, you, you send it in once a year. We make one payment a year. Oh, okay. And you have to do that in October okay. to get it to come out in December. Both payments are charged in December. And the rationale for doing that was because of high interest rates? Yes. We, we took the, the, if I remember what uh, the administrative secret did, is he took the one that was the highest interest rate, started making more payments on it. Um, and that's how we got it down to that. And we, it was to go until 2015. And uh, it should be paid off in 2013. Okay. So we were able to cut two years off of that. Thank you. It's just from my recollection of what we did. Is there a seasonal worker on the sewer? Um, the seasonal worker is, is the extra labor, and the seasonal worker usually uh, is a summer worker. So if he goes out and leaves out of the sewer plant, that's charged an extra labor for the seasonal. And that is a line item extra labor. That's part of what he does. So if he does any work out there by the sewer treatment plant, that he's charged the sewer. Questions on sewer? The next you'll see is our sewer bond um, fund. And you'll see that we have a beginning balance of 80000 um, By the bond uh, law that we have in our, on our books is we have to keep one payment ahead or one payment in the, in the savings. And that is about 80000 It was about 80000 it's now not, but we like to keep that in here. That's why I think that next year we can pay this off. Any questions on sewer? Long time? Next one is CEPD. I think we had a lot of discussions on whether TV is making it or not. Basically what pays this is the service fees from cable TV and HBO. Now, one thing about this, about it not making it, from what I understand that uh, the reason it appears to make it right now, even if barely, is because all of the time spent by Tracy to maintain this isn't charged to this. That's correct. So it's kind of a, it's kind of misleading to look at just these numbers and, and draw a conclusion. I think to get the best picture at some point would be to get some number from Tracy that if he was to charge for all of his time, mm -hmm how much more would be charged than what's shown here. Because uh, right now, in, in, um, just, just as an example, wages for TV is $6,500. I know that is not enough for what they do for TV repairs. And even if you're to look at broadband, they budget $7,000. They can spend three days on trying to repair a broadband service because of how much time they have to trace it down. So, uh, and Tracy has said this many times at budget, uh, that if he was to, to charge for every time that they go out and fix that, this would not be enough because it it can take them literally three days to try and figure out a broadband. Let alone the times that they're in here trying to figure out whether a modem is working or if it's got a good signal or whatever. So it, I think Councilmember uh, Lewis is correct. I don't think it is a true cost of what they do.
on, on your uh, front page you have, um, I guess they're both revenues. One you call, and I'm, I'm having a tough time figuring out which is which, but you have your cable TV service fees, mm -hmm. and then down below you have telecom sales. Telecom sales is broadband. Okay, so that's the internet stuff. Yeah, that's the internet. Two hundred fifty. Two hundred thirty. Two hundred thirty-nine. Yeah, two hundred twenty-six CATV um, customers, and they have fifty-two HBO customers. Two hundred fifty HBO. Fifty-two HBO. Two hundred twenty-six. And again, from what I understand from Tracy, uh, HBO raised their charges by two dollars that we were unable to raise our fees. So. HBO is being subsidized. That's correct. We we the customer when they sign up for HBO pays nine seventy five a month. The last time I looked at HBO it was over eleven dollars a month uh, for us to that we had to pay our the programming costs. So but it just got raised again. But I believe it just got raised again. I haven't looked at our our programming costs. Is that an annual fee per per month? Per month. That's a that's a Tracy. Oh, okay. so it's a per. It's a per customer fee. Oh, but per I, customer. So, so every time we retransmit HBO to a home or a business or whatever, that's it's a fee that we pay to HBO. But I don't know if HBO raised last year. They raised the year before in mm -hmm. 2009. I don't think they raised in 2010, but I believe they just raised. So your question was, do they raise it annually? Yeah. It's yeah. hard to say. Right. It's whatever. We're at their mercy. Right. And, and the last time we asked, uh, Tracy said, all the stations raise their fees. Mm -hmm. and, that, and they're all doing that because, the, well, so it's things are going on in the marketplace <laughs> in cable TV that's, cause, that's causing channels state, you know, to, to charge for, to increase their fees to providers like us, like Turner, like <coughs> I, I, I assume in some of our later meetings or maybe our, you know, uh, planning session or something, we can have discussions of whether we should even be in the business or not of providing city TV. I think that's one of the questions that's going to come to you. Because, I mean, I mean, I'm on city, you know, I don't mind it, but it's not like there isn't alternatives out there. It's almost like the city's competing with private in industry. <laughs> you know, which I don't think is... That depends on how you define the word competition. You know. Competing. Well, we got, we got a good deal going. You know, but... Yeah, and it's a, it is a discussion we've had um, during my time on, on the council that should we be in business was there any conclusions? Um, well, again, I'm not sure what you mean by conclusion, but <clears throat> the decision at budget was to move forward um, offering a service because we do offer a cable TV, TV product and an internet product is, that is um, less expensive than all the others on the marketplace. Uh, and, and there's a niche for certain a certain type of customer that doesn't necessarily want the 100 channels, that's comfortable with the 30, that doesn't necessarily <clears throat> want the wide bandwidth and internet, that's comfortable with the, the slow broad, broadband for a slightly smaller fee. And because that we have that niche of customers, to take that away from them when they might not be able to afford a larger um, a larger monthly fee, um, we decided to continue offering it. Just to respond, but part of the reason that we don't charge more so they can afford it is because we're not charging the actual costs. That's correct. Which, 
I, I don't think is right myself. But if it's right or wrong, it's certainly not sustainable. Yeah. Okay. So at some point we can rehash that. Where the money's subsidizing this coming from? So we're subsidizing a cable broadband. Where are those tax dollars being pulled from to subsidize us providing a service at a non-competitive rate that because we're competing with another entity out there, another business, and so these tax dollars are subsidizing this service. So it's creating an unfair marketplace. Where are those, are those coming out of the general fund subsidizing it? No, um, Tracy is subsidizing it for not charging his actual labor. So, so, out of, so it's out of, indirectly crew, it's out of electrical. His crew is not charging what they would normally charge to repair the line. But the rate increase from HBO that we, we can't charge for, where does that money come from? Coming from this fund by Tracy not charging. I mean, it's, it's balancing because it's, he's not. That's correct. It's balancing because he's not charging the correct, all the labor that he puts into it. So, I mean, it's, it's being subsidized by uh, the, public, the electrical side. I think the public needs an alternative. Some some alternative, alternative. I don't know what it would be. So, but and when we looked at it before, uh, knowing that it wasn't sustainable, um, the comments were made that okay, let's sell it to somebody that that could operate it, and that, that apparently there wasn't any interest in taking it over. Mm -hmm. uh, small. Something worth you know looking at, you know, as far as how do you get rid of it, yeah. you transition it, or you just turn the switch off. Well, and, and the other comment that was made, though, is that we have the possibility, it's actually on one of our priorities, to bring a fiber optic line, um, a backbone, uh, through town that would um, would certainly affect our competitive advantage uh, and our ability to offer a different type of service for our, the, the term that's being used here is telecom, but our, our internet, as an internet service, our internet customers. We could offer um, a different type of service than we offer now, uh, and that—that's all because that's that's been out there for the last couple of years. Um, it was also one of those things. Well, let's see what ha what happens with that. Now, hopefully, our priority of of investigating that and, and making that happen will will come to fruition. But it didn't the first time. The last the last time we had this discussion did not result in bringing a fiber optic line that, that changes the type of internet service we're providing. Joe? Yeah. A couple things regarding that, but number one, the telecom can be s supported separate from CATV, mm -hmm. so there's really two decisions there. Yeah. Making one doesn't prevent the other. Uh, but even if uh, the fiber optic was to happen, that's going to cost some money that we, to do it right, we would be faced with the necessity of presenting rate increases to cover that additional expense that people would vote on that may or may not, you know, get passed. <laughs> So, you know, I, and, and my whole thing is that I, I understand we're trying to be nice and cover a niche, but I don't know that's the responsibility of city government. There's other providers out there for, in most cases, whatever anybody wants. So, so there's providers now, but I think yeah, the city got into the exactly. business, we did it for economic development because nobody was going right. to do it for us. And so it was self-sustaining financially then. But now you've got other competitors that can give more for less. So anyway. How many are on broadband? 52? 50, you said. Well, that was HBO. HBO. That oh. I got electric, water, or sewer, HBO, and CTV, I think it's one on there. I thought I covered them all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you know, when we've, when we've asked this before, it's been, 
it's always been a at least slightly bigger number than cable TV. There's a there's been a discount associated with your if you get both services. You mean broadband? Yeah, I think it's a is it ten dollar or something like that. Um, so there's an incentive to get both services. So that number is probably above two point six. Uh, or above 278. 278 is the number for HBO for, for cable TV. No. no. 226 is the 226, but, uh, the but you said 52. 52, 52 of those? Or in addition to those? 52 have HBO of the 200. Okay. Mayor, here's a point Gail kind of touched upon it, but we've set a priority for fiber optics and that's the nice thing to look at and have that backbone come in. Gail somewhat touched on it a little bit when he said the new fees, but if we're creating a new fee, we're, uh, we're handcuffed because we can't create new fees and charges without a vote of people. And that's a huge thing to think about because if we're trying to do infrastructure uh, build up and we provide this new service, we have to go before the voters, is the way I'm reading it, to provide this new, or provide this new service because it's going to be a new fee. And that it's an up and down vote, and so how do you how do you communicate that message as city government? We need to have this fee for this fiber optics, and yet people say, "Well, I don't want to pay any fee." Okay, then we've defeated all the stuff we're trying to do when it comes to economic development. Yeah, and I I don't necessarily look at it as hand for myself. I don't necessarily look at it as handcuffs, other than um, you know if we say, "Look, the the option is end an unsustainable service." or establish a new fee that allows us to create a sustainable service. That's an up or down vote. If voters don't want to support a sustainable service, then you know it has to be communicated by not supporting a sustainable service. We're going to eliminate the, the service that the city offers. And that, I mean, the other thing is that there's a ripple effect if you eliminate a service because if you look through these pages, there's there's, there's, it also affects the administra administration department, right? Because the, what, what Marianne refers to as upstairs here also answers phone calls about um, cable TV and internet, bills for cable TV and internet, administers cable TV and internet. So you're, you're uh, reducing the amount of revenue that, that comes into the administration department as well by eliminating the service. Yeah, so, so all of that has to be communicated, but ultimately, it's an up or down vote. If if voters decide not to, you know, not to continue with an uns um, a sustainable service, they have to, under, you know, we have to communicate. The city has to communicate the the consequences of that of that vote. The other the other part of the communication, though, is that this is not a, a new fee that. Everyone has to pay. You get to choose to pay that new fee if you want that service. So if you want if you want to buy internet from the city or cable TV from the city, you choose to pay that fee. But it's not like just because we voted yes for it, everyone has to pay it. It's only people that want that service have to pay for it. And I think so. That's I mean, there's a lot of different ramifications of, of what you're talking about there. Um, but hopefully we can, um, you know, we can get the key to those handcuffs and, and you know, just you know, communicate everything about about that decision. So. This follow-up, as I understand it, I mean, I've had a variety of them, fiber optics and stuff, and we're putting in fiber optics, we're kind of allowing the fiber optics to come through town, and then we charge from all of our poles of all of our, our things that come in here, but then they're selling us. And they're, they're, they're looking for customers to go on their fiber optics on uh, or, or are we looking at it as being our fiber I, the, the, I don't think there's been a proposal from a company to, to put in a line and sell to customers. The proposal is that the city pays for a line to come through town that then existing broadband lines can, that go to, to you know, residences and businesses can tap into. Oh. It's just a different line that through which we would be transmitting the service. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> if I 
misstate this, correct me, but uh, as I understand it, if you were to eliminate uh, both CATV and telecom, there would be about a $40,000 hit to the general fund for administrative time for the existing staff to spend time on other stuff, but there would be some financial impact to the general fund. Uh, the other caveat to CATV is th there's some kind of throttling point of up to 250 customers. And if you go over that 250 to 251, there's a surcharges that kick in okay. that would also increase expenses. Our, our, our dish service does that, that as well. So I, I just think sometimes it would be good to have a full absorption cost analysis of real costs done so we know the real picture and potential for expenses so we can take a look at long-term implications. What would it take to get that, that kind of cost analysis? Is that something you could do, Mary? Uh, with, with the help of Tracy. I mean, I, I can do the cost analysis of what the TV channels cost us. Um, uh, but, but Tracy also <coughs> has another section that, that he has because he's familiar with what what our transmission fees from channel 2, 6, 8, 10, what they cost us. So and what they would cost and us. And what they would cost us. If yeah. we went over 250. Uh, and I do know that our dish service would definitely go up um, well over $1,000 well over a thousand dollars a month. So I mean, it, it can be done. Um, it would take some time, but yes, I think it needs to be done in order to give you, the council, the proper insight of what uh, it is going to cost us should we continue uh, this route. So I, I think it is a, a necessary step that we need to take. Is it something that could be done in the next three months? I put a list down here. I'm, I'm going to give Paul a list of what we've been asked for. So yes, I did put cost analysis for CATV and broadband. I think that's. I think both of those have to be analyzed as to what the cost is because um, we have to know what Tracy's crew puts into fixing uh, the system and what the actual cost is for, for both CATV both and telecom. Yeah. yeah. The, the reason I ask is because if if we were able to get that cost analysis. In March, I think we we'd have the information to be able to um, take a fee increase to the, the voters and help the voters make that decision. Mm -hmm. If if we don't if we if we wait till July, I'm not sure we have the time to get that in at the next general right. election. So, um, is that something that the council would like to have um, within the next? Three months. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks. And I'd be willing to help with that. Okay. Any other questions on uh, TV or broadband? Okay. Then we'll move to our next one, which is the OED loan, which is the sewer uh, payment of the city of the sewer. OIB Firehall, um, that's the Oregon Investment Board. Um, it's, it's the loan we took out uh, for the fire for the new fire station. Currently that is being paid for out of the general fund. It's a monthly payment that we send uh, to the Oregon Investment Board. Excuse me, what, what's the additional loan payment entry. Can you talk about that? That is the uh, additional loan payment that uh, is budgeted for that I've indicated that has to be called in two months prior to them taking Okay, the so that's account. not going to happen? No, not this year. Okay. But I do have it on the tick list for next year. To and so yeah. would we be using the same 40000 or? Huh? 
I mean, you wouldn't need new revenue next year. No, 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 because that, that additional loan payment is being transferred um, out of the sewer fund. So that that would not need additional. Okay, additional yeah, we just carry that 40000 over. Yes. Okay. Is there a way to make that, rather than wait until next October, just make the request now? I, I could. Uh, I, I believe I could. I've never asked for that so far in advance, but uh, that is a possibility. I'll sure check into that. You're saying spend it out of this year's budget? No, it's, it sounds like we can't do that because we didn't give them the, we didn't give them the notice for this year. But I'm since we didn't give them the notice for this year, I'm thinking why well, let's just give them the notice for next year right now. Okay. So that when they send the bill next December it's going to reflect the additional payment. Well, that's what Mary Ann said. I'm going to see how, I know that it's three months in advance. Will they take my notification now and work it in the paperwork so that come December it's already done? In other words. But that would, that would have to be a guarantee that, you know, because I have to tell them how much I'm paying. I can't just say we're going to make an additional loan payment. I have to say I want to put $20,000 additional to the principal. Right. And then they figure it out in the paperwork. So it probably has to wait until... So I'm wondering if I have to wait until the budget is approved. Then I could call them in July and say, this is what we want to do for our upcoming payment in December. So that I would have the, the correct amount. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you'd also have to wait if you're going to commit until the actual revenues have been received. Okay, any questions on the OIB fire station loan? Okay, the, the next one is the city light revenues, um, both for in city and uh, South Bank. And South Bank uh, is uh, from Cascade Walks towards Bridal. I, uh, Unless you have questions. Well, no, I, I just like to make a statement. Uh, the South Bank uh, was split out from the city years ago in the 90s, I think, back when I was on council, because everybody paid the same rate. But, like, you know, 70% of the city labor was spent out in that area doing trimming to keep those lines open. And it was kind of thought that the city was subsidizing, you know, the, the expenses associated with maintaining uh, the lines out of town. So we separated it and created the South Bank so it had its own rates, which are usually higher mm -hmm. than the city to account for those direct expenses associated with uh, maintaining the lines out there. Uh, anyway, FYI. That is correct. Uh, any no more questions on City Light? The last fund is Capital Group. This is a, a reserve fund that um, the departments put part of their reserves into to, um, for expenditures like new vehicles, um, new computers, whatever um, they feel is going to come up down the road. Maybe not next year, but maybe 10 years down the road. We try and save um, <coughs> for things that we think is going to happen. also where the revenue would go should the fire, old fire station sell, uh, the old fire truck sell, and modern building sell. Uh, this revenue would be put in uh, to this department because the electric department uh, loaned $450,000 to help pay for the fire station. So any revenue generated from the old fire station would go back to So the 
just so, mm-hmm. on that last point, though, you pain that loan back. So you wouldn't automatically put if if we paid that loan back, or, you know, <coughs> you wouldn't just automatically whatever we get automatically goes in because you might overpay. Correct. We would only pay up to the four hundred. Up to the amount. I hope we have that problem. I hope we have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that is the. Um, Review of the financials. The other thing with the financials that I'd just like to point out is on the front page you receive a single sheet that says combined cash investment. This is the. Um, okay, let us find it. Okay, cash, just a single sheet that was on top of it. Okay, gotcha. thank you. This is the uh, cash that the city has, um, both in the government pool and in your bank account. Uh, you see that on the top top section of this, it says cash in the bank. Uh, you have the cash and petty cash. These are the uh, banks that we have out to operate. And then of course you'll see the government pool. The total combined cash uh, for the city is uh, 2.3. Uh, you'll see that down in the next session section, the allocation of those funds. Um, this shows what each fund has out of that uh, combined cash, and it all equals out and back. Except yeah. there's one negative, right? There is one negative. You'll see that there's a negative 24000 in the emergency services fund. And from what I understand what you told me, since that has a negative balance, but there is and has been money spent or expenses incurred, since this has a negative balance, there's no revenue out of ambulance to pay for it. So that comes out of the general fund cash. Comes out of the bank account, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The other funds are subsidizing, if you want to say subsidized, subsidizing the EMS fund by utilizing. Um, it's not coming out of, quote, a certain fund. It's coming out of our bank account, okay. which right. is a combination of all funds. So please don't that somebody's paying for this. We are all paying for it. The whole city is paying it. It's not just one fund. Is that deficit because bills are still out there and there's still bills to, that have yet to pay or the contract's not being paid? Or? No, there's still there's still billings out there that we still get dribbling, I mean, two, three thousand dollars a month from Springfield that's coming in. Um, but the most that we got in was just last month, which was when November was 61000 I believe I put 61000 into the EMS from property tax. That's why you went from a 97 to a 24 in one month is because of property tax. And you will see some more increases in the property tax, but only to, to the $79,000 limit. So, uh, but we need to get more ambulance revenues coming in uh, and build out. So part of this fund deficit then is because some people pay quarterly on their property taxes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, not everybody pays on November Day. It was the three, three things. So I usually get a payment once a month from the prop, from whatever we're doing. But, but maybe, maybe this is the time to kind of point this out as an example that the uh, of how a budget is not a precise document. When this budget was created, it included revenues being generated by the ambulance yes. service. That is correct. Those revenues have not been coming in, no. and this is what you end up with. Be- because there's 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 no way to, to generate those revenues now. You have to adjust. You have to look at you have to look at your budget and figure out a way to adjust. Okay. Which is, you know, Paul's been telling us he's in the process of doing yes, it. But that's it, yes. there's a plan. But something happened with that plan. We don't. We we took away our ability to generate revenue. Now we have to. We have to make an adjustment. But so. Yeah. So the revenues you may be receiving, if I remember looking at an old rate aging report from uh, ambulance billing, it really took like ninety days or so from 
a call to send the bills out for the insurance da -da 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 -da, for us to receive money. So a lot of the receipts you've been getting have been based upon calls that were done, you know, three or four or five months ago. And in the last few months, there's been no real ambulance calls. So the money is going to go to zero or close to zero. I believe the last uh, one I balanced um, for November of the accounts receivable for ambulance was still in the neighborhood of $54,000 that we have out there waiting for revenue to come in. Now, I did send, um, and honestly, I can't remember what month, several uh, packets to Springfield for ambulance billing. That's why it got back up to to the $74,000. And I do have two billings that I have to send out to Springfield, but most of that is from the previous six months that we're waiting for. But so, so that's just that's just the nature of medical bills. The nature of the beast. I mean, it's, right. you know, the, the soonest you probably expected is the 90 days that you referenced, but earlier this year we, we, we got a bill payment, um, I think it was close to $10,000 from two, three years ago that had just been kind of, the insurance companies have been doing their thing or, you know, stalling or they probably called it due diligence and ultimately we finally got it. So there's, you know, there's hope that, that, that some of that could be could continue coming in, but you're right. We haven't been answering medical calls for about six months now. That recently started back up again. But there was a, a time period where we can't expect anything. Randy. So maybe a, a simple question or, or to point out is the negative 24,000. Had we had, or if we get the Multnomah County contract of 20, and that's reflected in here, that would be twenty thousand dollars less. Yes, I, I don't believe you're going to get the twenty, and I, I'll tell you why. It's because number one, we didn't we didn't respond from July to December, so I don't think you're going to get ten thousand of that. You might get the other ten, and I look at this as two separate months, two separate quarters or halves, because they requested us to bill them ten thousand each half. So mm -hmm. in my mind, you might get the ten thousand from January through June. If we are up and responding, but I doubt if you're going to get the twenty. Now that's just my personal observation by yeah. how they're asking us to. I think them. it's good to be realistic about it. You know, so I really don't think you're going to get the twenty. I have seen the truck down there, and I'm trying to think when it was that I saw it, but it was. Well, we have been responding yeah. since Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. But the key into is, Multnomah County. The yeah. key is to get Multnomah, Multnomah County comfortable with how we were responding, and are we responding 100%? Right. And. July through December, I don't think they were comfortable and we weren't responding. So that's just my interpretation of how they want us to go. So realistic, possibly 10, and I doubt it will be 20. I'm just trying to set your mind that you may be 10. But you also said there's $52,000 worth of outstanding we accounts receivable. We have accounts receivable, and I'm, I'm thinking it was 54000 um, That's not reflected in the budget at all. That is reflected, um, when I bring it in, you're correct, that is not reflected, I'm trying to think how I, how I document that. Um, I should probably sit down with you and show you where that comes in, because there's a certain amount of write-off that I have to do at 32%. Right. We talked about it. It's 32% that I have to write off from the initial, from the initial uh, bills that they send out. Yes, we get revenue in periodically, but um, I think you're only going to see about 60% of that there, out of that 54, if, I, if I'm thinking my numbers right. So if we did receive that, 60% of 54, it wouldn't be a negative bill. Providing we have no more expenses throughout the year. Yeah. Well, no, there's expenses, yeah. There's expenses there that are continuing that we don't have revenue coming in. So I think you'll find that this will grow and start to grow back up again. 
What, what, can you, I don't know, Council, but there shouldn't be a lot of expenses, right? You have fuel? Yes, when you say a lot, I think you're going to see roughly, and I'm just estimating 5,000 a month. Okay. Estimate. Okay. That's fine. Because you have phone, fuel, um, repairs, should they need something repaired on the engines or whatever. Right. Will you see twenty, thirty thousand a month? I don't know. Is Devon's twenty five hundred a month coming out of here? Yes, it is. Okay. Thanks. Okay, the next item on um, the list that Paul has worked out for me is identification of red flags. Um, I went through the through the financials with Paul. I've discussed a few concerns. Um, there's nothing quote major, I think month review uh, when Paul and I sit down and perhaps with counsel when I get through my reports here I think there might be some some things we need to look at but right now I think everybody's trying to watch their pennies um, and I think we're, we're doing okay um, but again I think the six month review is, is where we need to really look at where departments are having some issues and where we need to cut and I'll get to that when I get to my report um, right now he has update on current year's budget. Um, is there anything council has on the current year's budget other than EMS budget? Because we know the emergency services budget needs to be pretty much redone as far as their priorities and where um, they need revenues uh, expenditures. But any questions on the budget? Yeah, I, I don't know if you can answer these or not, but. Just as a general question, I know you're looking at the numbers, and when we say we're okay, that means that you know the revenues are equal to or exceeding expenses. But I don't know if in the if you were to ask the department managers if they're having to uh, delay projects in order to meet that. Or not, or you know. I can't. I, I know. I know you can't answer. I can't that. answer for the other partners. I can answer for mine. Right. For for admin. Okay. Um, that yes, I'm delaying some computer work because I don't want to use all my computer budget in the first six months of the year and find out I've got a catastrophe waiting three months later. So yeah, I am. I'm putting things off um, on the computers because I have so much money and I gotta I gotta watch it. So as far as our office up here, yeah, there is a project that I'm holding off on. But now, one of those things you putting are putting off is not fixing your email problem, right? Um, I'm up and running again, but uh, yes, our email problem with the server um, is still an issue. But again, I I'm, I got to hold off until I know that I'm not going to have a server go down in three days. I, I I mean, I just I just don't think I have. Well, I, I, I don't want to. And beat, I've, I've talked to Gail about this. I, I don't want to beat this to death, but there was a, a, a situation in the environment here where she was getting caught with viruses that could not be resolved with just virus protection, and therefore her mail was down a lot. And in talking with, uh, I brought a guy in to just validate, and they're doing all the right things, but it was thought that there is something. Uh, on the server that's contaminating maybe your, yours and Tracy's PC and it's be, it may be the only way to avoid it is to change from using Outlook to another mail client okay to avoid that virus and that was part of an agreement that you guys had talked about doing is that part of what's being held up we have uh, agreed to try and do that right now I'm Quote the guinea pig. I'm okay. using that client right now on my okay. computer. Okay. Okay. So that's in progress. So so that I can see how it's going to interact with the other employees and whether that's going to be beneficial for us. And so I've used it what I think three weeks now. Okay. So yes, that is in the works, and I've been uh, communicating with Dave, our IT guy, on how many viruses we're finding on our server. Um, we're running it every day, and you know it's it's a constant battle. 
think he agrees. I think um, I agree. We need to change the environment on our computer and go to a different. Uh, go to Unix. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm running Thunderbird right now. Yeah. Um, okay. Which and is okay. So it's different. But, yeah. and, and the only reason I bring that up because you know, as a customer. <laughs> <laughs> and we publicize, you know, your guys' email addresses, and people try to communicate by email. And then, I mean, I found out myself. I, I kind of wait till three o'clock in the afternoon, and I don't get a response. And I call, and I find out that our email's down. So, it's it's just not a convenience. It's I think it's a business necessity because it's used for critical business communication, not only within the city but probably outside the city. So. If, if we begin, I, I just think that's something, you know, you should work with Paul and bring to council if that starts to be delayed too much, okay. we, we should have, give us the opportunity to see what we can do. Yeah. And you can't send us an email and tell us. I can't yeah. now, my computer's been up about three weeks. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So is there any um, discussions on the budget that I could answer? I can't answer uh, the project issues with, with the other departments, but um, I think that once you, we go through the reports, I think maybe we'll have a better feel for what I can produce for you so that you will keep in tune with what the budget uh, is like and where we're at. Let's go through the reports. Okay, that's our next slide, is the reports. Um, I gave you three reports. You'll see I stapled them together in this report. See, one of them is revenue less expense report. The other one is a quarterly report. There's a quarterly report. I don't think. I'll give you one. I'll give you one. I'm sorry. I'll give one to you. And then finally, a graph. I did um, for revenue expenditures. I'd like to touch base on the quarterly report first. That looks like this. This is a report that um, Council Member Lewis had, had asked that I, I try and, and do. And I am for this report. I talked to Paul about it. He wasn't. He, want, he liked it, but he didn't know if, if it would do what we needed it to do. And I pointed out to him that, that I think this report will help the department heads figure out where they're at and won't. And I don't want to use this word, but I don't know the word. Um, force them to look at their budget and see where they're at. By, by giving me a forecast, they're actually having to sit down and look at their financial and tell me what they project. And I think that's very important as we um, we go forward in figuring out whether where we're at, especially these hard times that we're running into. So I've I've created this report. Is it 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 has some work that I have to do on it because I didn't get the uh, a few of the uh, nice nice looking report quality that I prefer to do. But this report is is I've created it and it can be done. Order. It can be done on a monthly basis. All I have to do is type in one date and it populates it. So it's not a, the most time consuming was to set it up, but now it's almost done. So it's just a matter of me getting the data from the department heads when they get their, their report on how they're forecasting the next six months. This is on a quarterly basis. So the next one that I'd like to try and do is in January. I want to give them December financials and say, forecast what's the next six months going to look like for us. And that's the forecast they would give me. I would input that forecast and it would be given to you to look and see what we are actually doing. What this gives you is what the approved budget is, what the remaining balance of our budget, and what percentage is remaining that can be used. And if you look at, and I'm going to go back real quick on this one, You'll notice that on the bottom of this page, it says 42% of the fiscal year has elapsed as of November. So in my mind, when you look at percentages, 
if they've used sixty percent of their budget in November, then they've got a problem. They need to back off a little bit on their budget because they've overspent what the percentage of our twelve months are supposed to be. So that's what this report I think is good for. It, it really gives you a quarterly report on how we're doing. Um, the next report is just a second. Sure. I'd like to elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, you know, the whole intent of this was, uh, as Lance has said and we all, you know, mention, is that the budget's a plan, but once it's approved, then departments, you know, make uh, periodic decisions based upon that plan, and things can change. Mm -hmm. There can be changes that affect revenue. There can be changes that affect expense. So the whole idea was to put up periodic checkpoints, i.e. quarterly, to where the department heads would go back and, and check that their uh, revenues are on track and then what they assumed that was going to occur during the year is still going to occur and that expenses uh, are being metered in such a way that they don't expect to exceed revenue. And if there's anything new that they can uh, present that at a high level. This is not at a line item. Correct. It's by category. So the intent was just three month checkpoints to reforecast your revenue at a summary level and reforecast your expenses to get to a bottom line. So we el eliminate the uh, fourth quarter surprises. Correct. So <clears throat> I, just a second, Jeff, but I'll get it. But I just wanted to uh, I apologize for stirring us back into the emergency services fund, but we just went through um, the uh, that document called Combined Cash Investment, mm -hmm. and we discussed the negative balance of the emergency services fund, which is our actual negative balance. And then I'm looking at our quarterly report, and it seems like it should show up that there's a problem there. In the, in, the, in the quarterly, and so if there, it, but it doesn't. It shows that we've got, um, our, we've got 53% of our revenues, but we've got, you know, well over that 42% that you, of, of time elapsed. So as we're as we're reading these and other, you know, we we recognize we've got an issue there that has to be addressed. How does this report communicate that issue? Number one, I don't want you correlate these numbers to this, yeah. okay? Because I have not. Verify these numbers. Okay. okay. What what this represents here is your cash. What this represents is your revenue expenditures. This is what you have in tax. There are two two separate things. This is what your revenue expenses. This is what you have in the bank. Now, I, I know that's a hard to correlate those two. It took me a while, but and it still takes me a while. Um, In order to bring uh, this back up to to a positive, you want to either have to bring in more revenue or stop spending money, and, and let the revenue, let the accounts receivable both come in and stop spending money. So it's not going to show you that you're going to hold twenty-four thousand dollars cash because this isn't cash. This isn't your cash report. This is your cash report. So I don't know if Gail can can elaborate on that. As a banker, <laughs> you know, kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like a checkbook. This is your checkbook. This is your budget. And your your um, <coughs> your revenue expenses that you brought in, but this is your checkbook. So, it's well, just, in terms of to, using this as a tool well, for department heads, you're well, not giving them their checkbook information. They are. They're getting this. Every they're getting month. that every month. Every month. So, so you're using a quarterly report. To report how the budget's doing, you're using the monthly report to report how the checkbook's doing. Yeah, they get this okay. every month. Shows them how much cash they have. Well, and so you use the two reports in, in conjunction. Jeff, to kind of talk what Gail said, I like this idea because this is I think an accountability tool. And you said you didn't like the word forces them, but this is where we hold department heads accountable, or where the public tax dollars are held to the, the standard where the department heads have to be within their budget process and they know what they're spending, it, it forces them to look at stuff and I think it's a good idea to have this accountability piece. 
for that transparency issue because they know that they have them do He said, it's going to all figure, here's the receipts later that's coming in. This, is, this makes them do that. This makes them see where where they've either overspended in materials and services or or how they have done, how they watch their budget through uh, what they plan. Eva? No, actually, I'm, I'm good to go. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I think to, to your thing that this uh, quarterly report doesn't reflect, you know, some of the other numbers. What's missing in the quarterly report is a revised forecast. And again, this is using, you know, the plan numbers at this point. But if I was the emergency services department manager, you know, I I now know we're not going to get those revenues. So I would be putting in the forecast a lower number, which would change some of these figures. And I would then be forced to also lower my expenses to keep it balanced. If I didn't, then you would see, based upon if I forecast a lower revenue and, a, and uh, exceeding expenses, you are going to see the yes. negative in this report. So, Basically, without the forecast from the department, this would not show the actual <coughs> what we feel would come out. So that's why it's important for the department is to forecast what their next three to six months is going to be. Randy, I, um, I guess, Mary Ann, question for you, but I'm having a tough time with these revenues on the EMS, knowing that you're only going to collect 60% of them, um, and I guess there's no other way around it because you also show the expense of the write-off okay. as an expense, mm -hmm. and then you get to the cash the cash balance and it's adjusted. It doesn't have that um, adjustment in it. No, this is so what it's, you have cash. I know, but you, it's almost like we're bumping it up by that uncollectible. We're bumping up the expense by the uncollectible. And, and it's almost like it's, an, I, so I'm having a tough time. People might call it smoke and mirrors, but it's the reality of you bill it, you don't collect it. But uh, let me chime in here and maybe this will help. From what I, if, if I understand correctly, you may have $100,000 in accounts receivable, but you only budget a percent of that as expected revenue. That's right. So the revenue is not equal to accounts payable. As far as the, okay, as far as the budget goes, but as far as the forecast goes, it's already adjusted then? Is that what you're Well, what there you're is, he, he, if, if he makes a forecast, it would be adjusted. Okay. And then these numbers would, would change, but no. Even in the basic budget, right, in the original document. Yes, in the original document, you, you, you budget you budget that the money you're going to receive less the write-off. Just money, the write-off. Yeah. Yeah. So it should be realistic expected revenues, mm -hmm. not inflated. Right. Yeah. So that would be easier for me to understand, but I understand from a public accounting perspective, you probably have to, you probably have to, right. you probably have to save what you're billing, not, not the reasonable expectation. Right, just, just doing this report and having a forecast doesn't change the budget, no. which is just, the, which is the plan that gets, gets passed by resolution. Right. Um, at the, at the beginning or end of the fiscal year for the following fiscal year. So you can't, you can't change it without going through a lengthy budget process, but you can update it as, as you recognize things have changed that would otherwise affect the plan. So it allows us that flexibility to work with our plan, but also be realistic. Any more questions on the quarterly report? The other report that the, um, the system actually does is called Revenue Less Expenses. This was a uh, similar report that, that previous councils have uh, received. Um, basically it takes the revenue that you get, get in, minus your expenditures, um, gives you 
the current year to date, the current budget, and your unexpected balance. Um, this is one report that I would ask to Whether this is a report that you want to see, uh, it's really up to you. Um, I can enhance this report in some respects. I can delete some things. However you, these reports are, are just samples of what I can do. If there's some other report that you'd rather see, uh, if you'd rather add something to the reports, I can see if I can do that. The other report uh, I, I gave you was just the general fund of revenue and expenses to show you what our revenue uh, comes in at every month, what our expenditures are every month. And this is basically for the whole year. Now, I only did one fund. Uh, it is uh, true that there's about, I want to say, eight graphs, maybe seven, that usually is done, that has been done to previous council. I didn't do all of them because I want to make sure this is something uh, that is useful uh, to council before I took time in to, to create these graphs. So I guess now it's up to you to tell me uh, or to give me ideas. What is it that you want to see every month for your financials? Or is it you want to see it every quarter? Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for suggestions. You want to see. Does the revenue less expenditures give you the uh, knowledge that you need or want to move forward every month? Or is it this report you want to see every month? Or is it just the cash report you want to see every month? I'm trying to identify what you need from me for, for every month. Are you, or would you be comfortable with us answering that after a break? Okay. Is everyone okay with taking a break now? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so we'll take a ten or a nine minute break, come back at five after. I'll go first. I, I do not need to see this chart. Okay. It's my opinion. Okay. Uh, I, I, I am anxious to see the real, after forecasting, quarterly report. Okay. I would like to pursue that. And then I'm kind of in the middle on the monthly. Um, I, I guess I'll... I guess, I, in my opinion, we should continue this till we see what influence the quarterly report has. But okay. continue what? When you say monthly, what do you say? The, the revenue, less, revenue less expenses. Okay. But yeah, I'm really more of a summary report guy. I just wanted to make sure what he said. You, was that what you were asking? You're talking about this one? Yeah, yeah right. Now, we have two, we have two here. One's, oh, wait one's the November statement, five month in the year to date. You have your November statement that I gave you, which this is the 47 page. The yeah, one. okay. Where, okay. Okay. Then you have the one that I'm, I gave you yeah. as, a, as a sample, rev, it's called revenue less expense. Right, uh, that's, I'm sorry, that's the one I meant. About a 27 page report. Okay, yeah. that's the one I got. And I could probably cut it down a little bit more because I see some funds that don't need the revenue less expenses right. and the quarterly report the are quarterly. those two that I'm most interested in. Okay. So it's the 47 page book that you're not interested in? Correct. Right. Okay. And the graph, the eight pages of graphs. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Eva. <clears throat> okay, here goes Bonehead head finance for me. Um, I am not as detailed, and so, but there's a thought that I had on this, um, on the graph, because I'm learning some stuff, is that it would be nice to see, like, those things of, like, you know, um, you're going to see your revenue spike on a certain funds when, like, say, um, property taxes come in, or some of those things come in, right? And so, then that helps 
it, it's helpful for me, although I could get the reports from the team really, um, so that I can sit there and look at that. And I can see kind of when the revenues are coming in during the year and whatnot to help there. The quarterly um, is really helpful because that's kind of checking your percentages and I get that totally going along with the combined cash investment report that you have. And then um, this one, I think, well, we're getting close to budget, but I don't, uh, I would think of this one like quarterly, but that's me, because you're really detailed. You really well, can dig through these on the, um, the revenues less expenses. Oh. I don't know that I would, uh, that that would be as helpful for me. And then how about, think. how about the revenue with comparison to budget, 47 page book? The only the only thing I can see is that the revenue less expenses give, giving you every month you do have a snapshot of what where we're at. If if you had if I don't give you anything, you know, and we just depend on the quarterlies, then I think you're you're probably gonna be surprised. Where if you had the revenue less expenses on a monthly basis, you could look at it and say, Oh, we might have a problem here or something. It would give you an idea of what could, could be coming up in the near future. Okay. So I I think you guys do something monthly. Um, I'm just not sure what that is. Uh, and we have a, we also haven't talked about the, the combined cash investment. I, you I, didn't mention that, did you? No. And you haven't mentioned that either. That's what we referred to earlier as the, the checkbook. No, I, I think that this is important that you have this every month. I like it. That's a monthly. Okay, I really do. I, I would not want you to not have it. I think this is important for you to have. That was the cash investment. That's, that's just one page thing yeah. that says that, hey, we balance to zero. All of our money is accounted for. Uh, and this is what your cash balances look like. This is an important document for you guys to see. Um, I guess I concur with what's been said. The uh, revenue less expenses form for me, and I would think the department heads, if you had a prior year comparison, worked into that. Oh, I could. I, I think I could put a prior year. Then prior that, prior year, what comparison on the on all these lines? Prior year, monthly, I believe. Uh, would it be maybe yeah. monthly? So, prior year for November would be a, a column. Mm -hmm. So if there was, oh, uh, well, okay, like on your labor expense, okay, if, if we're spending okay. a whole lot less, a whole lot more, it would show up. Okay, good. So you are, if I clear, if I understand you, a prior year monthly, month to date. Is that it? so? It would be comparing this November to last November. Really, you could have the current year to date actual compared to the current year to date prior year. You might have an influence too. And Randy, did you did you want to talk about the quarterly report or the chart um, or the combined cash investment? The, the, no, I just most I concur with what's been said so far. So I I like the uh, the one sheet. The graph, I think I was the one that asked for pie chart kind of stuff, but it's like, yeah, it doesn't really tell me anything. You, but just we've had them for the different funds in the past. And right, and that's what I was going on. I just didn't want to create charts uh, problem if this was not an option. You can create these charts. I did revenue expense, but you could do beginning balance. You can you can do many different things with the chart. So I would need to know what you want to see. Yeah, I think I think if I had the prior year comparison, because that's what I looked at before on those prior was prior year okay. comparisons. And, and that's what this is basically doing, prior year revenue, prior year expense, because it's showing you one year. So if I put it on the revenue less expense, that would give you what you need. Yep. Okay. Mark? Yeah, the, the quarterly report. Um, now, are they going to include the forecasts, or is that... Um, they would include, when you get it quarterly, mm -hmm. it would be, the department heads would have to give me the forecast that they're forecasting, and I put it in the, in the matrix, and that would be the report you get. Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, I like that. And then the uh, monthly, the uh, cash investment, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's nice, that's helpful. And then um, the revenue uh, with less expenses. Uh, and uh, I don't know about the, the uh, 47 page or the, you know, I think the uh, uh, revenue less expense gives me more information, I think. So Tom or Jeff, no graph and less than 47 page. <coughs> yeah, we we're, were talking about here. Less 47, no graph and everything must be going to work here. So um, I find that the chart to be helpful, um, like Eva. Um, and um, I think that the, the combined cash investment, like you said, is something mm -hmm. important for us to have. Um, and the, using the forecast with, or the quarterly report with forecasting um, is something I'd like to see. Um, so I kind of agree with what, what Eva said there, but I think what you have here is just a consensus that we want. Um, a few of us might want, want, might want these <coughs> charts, but the majority don't. So we, we'd be able to request that, correct, from, from you, if we wanted to see those. If, yes, I can. Um, is it the revenue and ex expense part of the chart that you want to see for, for the different funds? Because I have to create all these charts. Yeah. And I once so. I create them, yes, they're there. Yeah. So, okay. Um, but but as far as just kind of the consensus of what we're, we're looking for here, um, the one page combined cash investment, mm -hmm. regular basis, that's a monthly. The revenue less expenses, mm -hmm. inc including, does everyone agree to the, Randy's idea to include the prior year comparison? Yes. Okay. And then also a quarterly report including forecasts. So those, those are three that there's a consensus that we want. Okay. And two of them are monthly and one. Anyone disagree with that? Okay. So does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Can I throw out another question, maybe kind of layered on top here? Where do we see um, gross revenues, maybe gross expenses, like electrical department, the CATV? Revenue and less expenses. So if we want, you'll be able to pull out reports maybe if, to look at like a five year trending is what I'm kind of asking. We, we are, uh, Paul and I have talked about um, the trend and um, getting that in. We do have in our program a five year analysis into our system. Okay, that's kind um, of my question. So, so we're, we see the bigger that's my pictures. next project is to look at that and try to, to look five years down the road to see where we're heading and what, our, <coughs> what we're looking at. Okay. Uh, we've not gone into that yet. But you don't, with the new system, did you put five years of history in there? We only put three. Okay. Three Just or four. FYI. Three. So to start with, be able to pull out a three year, and the next year, four three. year. Mm -hmm. If I had, if I needed five to do five, I'd have to go back and put in just the totals, not each individual, just the totals for each department. If, if that's how we want to go for five years. If you want to see what your five years you did before, and then what you're projecting for the next five. I think eventually, I'm you know I'm only here a year, but eventually, the five year thing would be there. Then in a couple of years, you'd, the system would produce right. something. Okay. I believe we put in three five years of history. Okay. Um, the next thing. Is Basically, what I want to do is give you an update on the work order process. Um, this has been in, as you well know, in our audit report for, for a number of years. And I had reported to you that we were going to get our software programmers out here in February. It seems uh, that they are, there's 
two systems that our software company is on, and one of them is classic, called Classic, and it's a very old system, and the other is Clarity. Clarity is our new program software, and they are in the process of converting that work order system into Clarity, and it goes out to a beta test site in February, and will be available for us to train on in April. So I have uh, basically postponed that training until April until the Clarity is up and running because I don't want to train, and, and this is just the process that they, they suggested and I have to concur, I don't want to train staff on the old system and they get a new system right. that's going to be totally different. When they come out here, I want them to train on the new system. So I have postponed their training until about April, and so that's where the work order uh, system is at. Um, basically, that's what I'm to report on. That that was a, a decision that, that I felt was beneficial <coughs> to the city is to wait. Okay. Um, but you said in April would be their beta. No, February is their beta test. Okay. So we're not going to get involved in beta. Correct? No, we're not testing beta. No. Okay. No. Oh, good. Um, they, they are projecting Been there, done that. <laughs> they're going out to their, they have their test sites already for beta testing. Okay. And then by April, they will release uh, the new software to us, and then they will come out and train our staff on the new clarity. So, that, so they're not being trained in two different systems. Okay. Got a question. What, once you do the, can you explain the work order okay. system and how that, how that will hit the books, I guess. Okay, the, the work order system is only one module of, of what is required for this work order system to work. You have your inventory, you have work orders, um, you have your assets, and there's one other module that I'm saying that I don't remember. But those three interact. Is it labor? No. A time, there's not time accounting? How much? Well, we have timekeeping already, but we are not using it at this time. Okay. This is one of the modules they need to train us on. The timekeeping goes in and says, okay, if I work six hours on this job, you can code it to six hours to that job. Right. The work order system is in conjunction with inventory, so it says, yeah. hey, I want two transformers for this work for this job. It goes in and says, I'm going to put two transformers into this job. So it takes it out of your inventory and puts it in the job, job of cost accounting system. So, because the auditors want to know what jobs the, the crews have been doing. Uh, you know, when South Bank was going on, they wanted to know what inventory went into South Bank, what their labor costs, what their truck costs, all of that. This, this system would do that for you. Whether that, whether when we get this all in, in your twine and, and going, is, is that going to be beneficial for the city? Um, Tracy has his ideas that we're not big enough, you know, we got, that's going to be too, too much labor intense for people to do. I, I don't know, I've not seen the system. Uh, we purchased it many years ago, so uh, Cassell was nice enough to include it in our, in our, they didn't charge us for it. So they're upgrading us, and, and that's part of our cost that they purchased it many years ago. So how is that going to affect us? I can't be sure. I, I don't know. I think what it's going to going to help is, is the auditor. I think it's going to help Tracy when it comes down to June. You're in instead of, I would hope, instead of two to three weeks of counting all everything, it's right there. But it's only as good as what you input into it. So if he forgets to put a transformer on inventory and he puts it out the door, you're not going to have it. You're not going to balance. So I can't answer that in good conscience or anything as to how it's going to affect Well, you would still do, at least for a period of time, still do a physical inventory yes, to map we would, that we would not to the system. Cut off. No, it's just mm. like that, system. that would tell you how much is not no. being used. No, we would, we would have to run a parallel system right. for a while.
that, that comes in line with the purchase order system, and that might be the one I was thinking of. That when you purchase a transformer or whatever, that that PO is in the system, that transformer goes to assets, and it sits there until V takes it out of stock and puts it onto the job order. So those four modules actually work together. So then that tells you your encumbrances. So if he's ordered a transformer and it's not, and he ordered it this month and it's not going to be here until um, two months from now, the encumbrance will be there. So it'll show that you have a $2,000 expense out there that you've got to account for. That's another uh, good thing that there tells us what you've got out there that you're buying. Pending. Okay, we had talked. Uh, did we talk about the proposed budget process? Oh, staff gosh, thank report? you. I didn't. I scratched that off the list. I, I, I did give you a thank you. Okay. I did give you uh, uh, also a handout. Um, it's a staff report that Paul had put together back for your November 14th meeting. I just made a copy of it so you can see it. Um, he also has a proposed um, budget development process on the next page, uh, leading you through six steps of the process and kind of explaining what each process uh, should help us accomplish. Uh, and then as when I get into the budget process, I give you a detailed timeline on where, when, when the first budget meeting is, um, basically when I have to publish and, and all the meetings to, to follow. The biggest thing is, is the uh, final page, which is the budget format. And this, I think, is going to help council and citizens. Um, when we do a, a, we do it based on a program. So if one of your programs, and I'm going to use pick on CATV, if the program is CATV, then you're going to have, one, what your revenue is, and all your expenses, and what services that's going to cover. So that's going to cover all your programming costs, all your channel costs and all that. And when it gets down to the bottom, if your revenue sources don't meet with all your expenditures, is that going to say this program has a problem? And, and that's what we're not identifying in our budget in many of the different programs. Emergency services, again, you all, all know, uh, you know, whether we want to supply ambulance, do we just want to do fire, do we want to do both? That's what's going to show, that's what's going to come out of this program budget, which is all new to me too. So I think this is going to lay out those programs for you and show what we can afford to do and what we can't afford to do and where we need price increases and where we don't. So when, uh, so these program reports would be done prior to uh, April? Yes, what, what the programs would have to be done, and I, I believe Paul is going to conduct two community meetings. Um, the department heads are going to get together and figure out what programs they're going to do and figure out their costs. Um, all of this is internal, because bottom line is I have to put it in the way the Oregon Budget Law tells me to do, which is by category, and so I have to take these and, and kind of put them in a different matrix. So. Um, Yes, this is going to be all done before our first budget meeting. Could you ask Paul to add, if you don't mind? Sure. I just think it'd be a good suggestion maybe to have a milestone with a date of when the program documents would be completed prior right. to April. And I, I think, you know, that's going to go into what I'm going to ask, because I'm going to get this information out to department heads, and they're going to have so much time you meet with Paul, myself, right. and get that back to us so that we can put it into the system, that, the matrix that we need to put it in. So I think that's, I think that's where it's going to head. And yes, I will ask him to put in a milestone to the program. Okay, thank you. And are, when you say milestone, are you referring to the second page here where it lists the steps? Yes. Mm -hmm. The steps in the budget process. Yeah. Because at the last meeting, 
we added another step, which was the work session with the department heads and other budget committee members. And he added, it looks like he added that either as in addition to step two or as a new step, I can't remember which. Yeah, I just didn't know if that's when these would be done or they, these would be done after that or. It'd be nice if they I'm were. I'm thinking they would either come between step three and four is, is where I would think they would come in at. But I will check with Paul. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Any questions on the program? Any program budget? Any concerns? Any So it's not your entire budget wrapped up in onto those sheets either. It's you're going to you'll have maybe 25 programs the city operates and then do a sheet for those. Or how in depth are you getting? Um, like cemetery could I mean is that is, would well, cemetery my, be my a sheet? My understanding would be cemetery for example. What does it cost for us to mow the cemetery, water the cemetery, uh, estimate what the cost is going to be for, say, five burials a year. You know, I mean, <coughs> that's where I see it going, but Paul and I have not gotten into that depth because this is something new to me. I have to, we have to think what, what, pro, what is a program? Is it the cemetery? <coughs> is that a program? Yeah, I think it is. Because otherwise, if we can't operate, if we don't have the money to operate the cemetery, then we need to do something with our, and I'm not, we're not suggesting this, but maybe, you know, if we can't operate the cemetery with what revenues we get, and then our plots are too cheap, or our open and closing fees are too cheap. I don't know that. I don't think anybody has sat down to say, what is it costing us? And I think that's where Paul is trying to head. Is what is it costing us to run the cemetery? What is it costing us to maintain this building? There's a, a, there's a lot of discussion that's going to go into these. And I, I, you know, the emergency services, we have a committee that's doing it. And basically, they all, the recommendation that we accept would be one of these sheets that would be filled out to say this is, this is what we're going to look like. Um, but I could see a lot of discussion almost on everything the city does. To answer the question, like the building, or, or it's basically all we have is our budget. We're not coming up with anything new. Maybe that would be another question for you to ask Paul: is which funds, if that's the right term, does he intend to produce one of these worksheets for? So we know. Otherwise, it'd be just taking the budget process and filling the form out and say this. Right. You have the budget document. These are the ten items that we're accomplishing. I, it's a little bit more information, but if it's a real analysis. And, and like I said, I have not talked about it in depth. I talked to Paul in depth about what funds are we doing, what programs are we doing. Is it something we haven't discussed? So. Uh, so you'll ask him. I've got it down there. Thank you. I, the, the way I look at that, though, is you, you'd have to do one of these for every fund. If, if this is the format that we're operating on, you couldn't leave a fund out and not do one of these for a fund because then you wouldn't have a budget process for that fund. If you couldn't have a budget for that fund, then, as Marianne said, then you couldn't operate a cemetery if it was a cemetery that you left out. Or you couldn't operate a museum if you left out the museum fund. So I think you'd, at, at, the, at the minimum, you'd have to have one of these for every fund. But then you're also talking about different types of programs like this building. I just use that as an example. And that's an example that you might do something in addition to each fund, but um, or some funds might get broken down into several of these sheets because maybe the administration provides more than one program. But I think at the, at the minimum, you've got to have a process to approve a budget for each fund. Well, but yeah. we're doing that today without these reports. 
we're, do, we're doing budgets today. Correct. Using the budget, using the budget system, system without preparing these program documents. Right. If, but what I guess the, the part that I'm saying is, though, if we choose to use this format, which I think is what's being proposed to us right now, if we choose to use this format, then we'd be going away from uh, the, how budget committee has traditionally operated. It would be going to this format. And we'd have to have this format for each fund at, at a minimum. It seems like the farm, I don't want to speak for him um, exactly, but it seemed like when I talked with Paul that he had thought that the budget process needed to have put in what we want to provide for a service like, you know, what we want to provide as front office, for instance. And then, so say that you get rid of um, personnel in the front office, what is your cause and effect? So I thought that that's kind of what the two things here, you know, what the services are going to be provided, setting the, the, what we're going to provide, and then what the cause and effect would be and what we decide. Because yeah. we don't have that no, currently. And I, and I don't disagree with creating it. It's just my head getting around creating it for every fund mm -hmm. rather than important funds or something. So it, it's fine. Keep it. So you're suggesting more of a, like a hybrid model where you you could you do this for what you call the important funds, and then not, and then just go use the traditional process for the less important funds. Yeah, I mean, some of these, you know. But some of those would not. I mean, like the museum. Are you going to do this for the museum? I, 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 I I'm just saying. Yeah, and and uh, I, I don't know. Jeff, I think for simplicity's sakes, we have a standard process. You know, this is what we want to go to. This is what we should do. There's this cause and effect because if you look at uh, budgetary processes or when committees have been formed, sometimes there's vision that says, hey, if we cut this, this is the effects that are going to happen. Or if we just arbitrarily cut it, and then all of a sudden you end up somewhere and you don't know what those cause and effects were. This, this forces everybody that discussion to have what are we going to have for services or not have for services. And even though it's kind of ambiguous, ambiguous ambiguous, there we go, um, for the cemetery to have one of these, but we still still need to have it because for consistency sakes, in case somebody says, well, you did it for this fund, but not that fund, you just be done with it, everybody, every fund has one, mm -hmm. instead of just have the hybrid, I think is what you were talking about. And I think the idea, is, as Eva was saying, is as part of our budget process, we say these are the services we're providing. This is how we pay for those services, as opposed to the traditional model, which is here's some line items that say revenues and, and expenses. This is just a, a more, um, uh, hopefully I don't stumble over this word, communicative process. Agreed. I, ex yeah, except yeah. What, I, what I have trouble with is, is uh, so if, if, if there's one of these created for every fund, when are all of these that have been created for every fund discussed and presented? Is that prior to creating the actual numeric budget or at the time? I mean, usually when budget begins, we're presented with a uh, a balanced budget. So does that mean we're going to have more meetings with the uh, based on these documents with the budget committee before a balanced budget is produced. No. Step three. I I, I look at it as. Uh, I don't see where these are. These these are developed by the staff. Developed by the staff. Between steps three and four. Okay. And we are reviewing them and making changes. We being the council? budget committee. Okay. Uh, during step five. All right. So as uh, as a department head comes in, they're sharing they're sharing their worksheet, this document, with us in terms of what what services are being provided. Because if you look at earlier steps, 
from step one with the community meetings and step two right. establishing priorities, that's the way we communicate to the staff what services we want. They take that information, put it in this document, and then explain through the process of, of completing this worksheet how they're going to pay for those services that we've established as priorities. So we'll discuss these at the time we have a proposed balanced budget yeah. for each fund. Right? That's the way I okay. understand it. All right. Okay. Is that the way you understand it? That's why I understood it because then you could say if you cut yeah. something out of the budget, you're going to see your cause and effect. I'm fine. I'm service. fine with it now. Okay. Any other questions? Thanks, Marianne. Good report. The next item on our agenda is to discuss boards and commissions. And we are at about uh, quarter to 10. Um, just want to kind of take the temperature here. Are we interested in um, a discussion of boards and commissions, or do we want to postpone that to another work session? I suggest yep. we go a little ways into it anyway, just to get our feet wet. OK. Oh, 15 minutes? Feet wet, yeah. OK. Anyone object to that? So we had a report um, for uh, for our last meeting, which has been put on our uh, tables again. It's uh, mm -hmm. the subject of city boards, commissions, and committees. Does everyone have a copy of that? Behind it are also uh, resolutions and ordinances that established our committees, and behind that are. Um, uh, the, the, the same list of committees, committee members, phone numbers, contact information. So we'll be working with three documents there. Um, at the last meeting, if you would take uh, a look at the, the second page of the staff report. <coughs> at the bottom, a list of options. <coughs> a week ago, we looked at these options. Um, and by consensus, we eliminated option one. That we, we said we did not want to keep operating as being currently done. Uh, and we talked about um, using a combination of, of option two and three. So reconsidering how to operate with uh, boards, commissions, committees, come up with a new approach and realign boards, committees, boards and committees to match the uh, city council priorities, direction, and community vision. everyone remember that yep. okay so I think that's um, I think that's a good starting place for us to talk about um, is there an interest in realigning these committees with our um, established priorities those being um, emergency services department finance economic development, um, communication, rebuilding community trust, enhancing, enhancing infrastructure, and organizational development. So six, six priorities. Is that a good target? Yes. Dale. I think so. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mark? Yeah. Andy? Yeah. Tom? Okay, so in, in, in looking at that, then I, I think that our number one priority being the emergency services department, I think we have, um, we took the step at the last meeting to create a public safety task force, which is a committee that's, that's a temporary committee that's looking at resolving some long-term you know, issues with that department. We also have a proposal that we created a council subcommittee on public safety, which we haven't taken action on yet. Um, is that is that an adequate? Um, are we are we comfortable using those 
at least what we've done so far with the task force, or do we want um, some other committee to be working on on that priority emergency services department? Bill? I think that's enough. Okay. Anyone disagree? They don't think that's enough? Okay. So in terms of that priority, we've We've got the Public Safety Task Force. Now, finance being our next priority, to me, I, I automatically think of budget committee. Budget committee is created by ordinance. It's also regulated by state law. But it, um, its job is to, is to work with city finance. And that, that's one of our priorities. Uh, but if you look at our list of, um, of uh, um, of items on, within that priority of finance, we're talking about determining the best use for the old fire station, um, comprehensive budget process, um, a review of all fees and charges, um, monthly reports, I think we've actually addressed that tonight, uh, closing out grants, um, RFQ for audit. You go through that list, you might have some things that don't necessarily fall under the purview of the budget committee. So is there, is there a need for a different committee to, to, uh, to work, with, work through those issues that the budget committee wouldn't necessarily be dealing with? Just a, another example, outsourcing the utility billing. Budget committee is probably not going to take that up. Selling the old fire hall, the old fire station. Budget committee probably not going to take that up. What are your ideas to the more I think about this, just realigning the boards and committees to match our priorities is instead of a hybrid of the two, I think three is a better option, just kind of rethinking all this. And kind of what you've talked about, is what we had in that discussion last time, but what are you thinking, What, who would you have do those jobs that you just listed off, other than what the budget committee can come in and do the budgetary process? Well, um, I mean, I think one suggestion is that you create a finance committee. I think another suggestion is that the council takes up those tasks and oversees those. And I'd be open to any other suggestions. Well, I think the council does do those tasks right now. Probably there's a few more within the, within the council. Mm -hmm. the, the budget committee traditionally is just you know, crank the budget out, <coughs> but they could be called into action for other items, I, I believe, if, if it's allowed by state law. They're advisory at that point to advise the council on topics. Wouldn't have to be all 14 of the budget committee. It could be a smaller group, but um, there is an existing committee, I guess, mm -hmm. that could be tapped. It would be job growth for them to be involved with some of the discussions also covered during the budget process. Um, so I, w I guess I wouldn't be afraid of or uh, opposed to calling them in to help solve some issues. Um, and that's that's happened before. We've yeah. reconvened the budget committee at times. But yeah. yeah, but I don't think we're saying the same thing because the definition of the <coughs> budget committee uh, has the members and numbers and who's a quorum. And I don't think the budget committee, you can't have five people meet as a budget committee. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. you were going to select. And, and like I said, we're on the budget committee as it is, so it would have so, to be something different. Though. Well, and I think that's where we come back to a financial committee, <coughs> which could be populated could, from could, members. Could call it that, sure. But I think it has, if a we were going to have a group to address it, I think it has to be a separate group even if the members are common, than the budget committee. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I guess, I suppose it could be a sub, treated as a subcommittee of the, of the budget, but I'd probably prefer not to do it that way. Yeah, I agree. So, um, the, the other option, I guess, maybe that I didn't throw out earlier, is that if you look at some of these issues, like J is complete uh, electric rate study, including tier two, and we decided 
we wanted to do a really thorough analysis that, of that, get more community input. We could do something similar to what we're doing with our economic development task force and our public safety task force, is create a, create a task force or a, a temporary committee that is given a specific charge on a specific issue at the time that we need that. I, I like that where you, you create it, they do their work, they report, they're done. But you give a timeline, right. and so it does. it's yeah. not a committee that right. got created that just kept rolling over. Are, are those what we used to call mayor community committees? They're only interim and they're not? They used to be. They're not, they're not governed by resolution or, or ad hoc committees? Yeah, I was, I like I was looking those. at one of these reports that, had, that listed mayor's committees, and it, it included Okay, so in Resolution 1222, uh, that, that, that document, it talks about mayor's committees and it includes budget, planning, parks and rec, tourism. Oh, really? That's, yeah, this is the resolution passed in May of this oh, year. Oh, okay. I'm, my, my old recall was, you know, just like we're talking, that the mayor could create subcommittees that yeah. were ad hoc in nature and and if you look specific purposes for a short period of time. And if you look at our council rules, um, they've created a, a standing committees. They create a, a list of standing okay. committees, which includes planning commission, anything that was created by an ordinance, a planning commission, okay. budget. And they also have temporary committees, which is, I think, what you're referring to. Okay, all right. Um, so when that topic arises, then you would create the committee, I mean, like a 90-day committee or <coughs> Right. Yeah, and in the council rules, it talks about the the mayor creating the temporary committee <coughs> in writing, establishing the length of time. So, and 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 I don't mean well. I, I do hop around, so I'm not going to apologize for that. But you know, the, the, as we're discussing these, some of these I just don't understand the purpose and scope of, like the the like the charter review committee. Are we doing a charter review? Well, Gail, I think this is the, I think the answer to that is no. But I think the, I think the purpose of going through our, pro of trying to align our priorities okay. with the committees is once we go through our priorities and talk about well, which committees serve that priority, whichever committees we haven't talked about yet, we then have to say, well, Oh, okay. I, These I, don't align with our priorities. Okay, okay. I Is there a committee that we need to to keep, or are we comfortable continuing with right. our priorities? Okay. Does that make sense? All right. So we're going to talk about our needs first, and then historical. Okay, that's fine. If that's if that's a if everyone's comfortable with going at it I, that I, way, I would go at it any different way. But I, okay. To me, I I think if if the focus is on what are our pri what did we just establish as our priorities. Yeah. Now we've, we've mentioned task force for public safety. We've mentioned budget committee. And so far, we ha that's all we've done. Yeah. And then at the end, we can, yeah. I, I, I think it would be a good idea to consider, and we'll talk more later, but uh, the, the feasibility of a financial ad hoc committee because I think there is a lot of rate issues and services issues commingled that a committee could get, could, could pull, pull some initial information together, you know, working with Paul and everybody as a foundation to which of those we should pursue and maybe spend money on to get more detail on. But, okay. So, other committees that we, we have a, oh, Tom, sorry. I would just have, I think that, that this should be, just as you're talking about there, where it's um, just priority first by the, by the, the council and created by the, the mayor, is when we see, we get a list of priority of things we want to get done, and if we need to develop a committee that uh, we've got an ordinance of committees, and, and to me, I we should hang on to one of the ones in the ordinance, keep with others, and then follow the process of if we need a committee like we have already created one, the task force, do that. And, and the problem I think that we get with committees, and why 
why there's still hope for Vaughn here is we aren't we aren't following through. We need to make sure that however we do it, we have a process that goes, this is what the committee, this, this is what we're asking the committee to do. Not just go about there and say committee give a bunch of ideas. These are some things we want you to we should have some type of a uh, a form of how we set them up. Is this what we ask you to do? This is what we want from you, this is the timeline that we want from you. For any community that isn't part of, the, part of the ordinance. And then you can screw each of the committees as you go. But the big part of it to me is, is organize a start and a, and a man and a reason, why, a reason why you're doing it. And so they have direction. And if we put that together of how we do it and how we end it, then we just create committees and we drop them off when they're, when they're done with, uh, with, with, our, with our line of uh, priorities. Right? And just, that, that seems the simple thing. What, what you end up doing is getting, instead of J, you're going to have all the way to Z down here with all these, because right. we'd we be creating lots of committees if we want to do it. Mm -hmm. but, but just what, what it looks to me is just what you've been talking about here is, is put, a, put an end date to it, you know, right. start date. Why we? Why the council wants to be what we expect from them, and then and they need to thank you and get the way, and, and, and then follow through on when that date comes. We're uh, we're done. That, that <laughs> we over. Get it off. Get yeah. it off. Get it off the list. Yeah. Yeah. And get more work done. That way. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and yeah, and yeah. you're getting done what you specifically. You're not running around here doing things right. that right. They, we're not trying to get done. Right. Anyway, that's what I. Mean. Jeff? Tom's idea it, it has good merit, but also I think that might give us more participation from the public, because if they know it's a small, focused issue and there's an end date, it's just not this continuing committee meeting, and they have a deadline to go and they can commit, they, they can mentally commit to this time frame and know they're done at the end, I think that, that helps in recruitment uh, for committee members and getting the input from the public that we want. But also, I, I somewhat disagree a little bit we had one uh, committee member approach the mayor about looking at redoing the amount of seats that are sitting on the tourism committee, I believe, and they're at least, at least looking at that. And so we're going to have to open up what is in accordance with our resolution or our ordinances. And so we'll have to open that up to look at that to, to have that part for us to look at. So I think we have to be flexible enough to do that and not just say, no, we can't. The ordinances we want are there. We can't touch those. We have to be able to open up those ones that are guided by ordinances and be able to adjust those accordingly. And, and Dale brought up another one earlier today, which is the museum uh, committee, when we talked about the fund, is there's a question about whether that, um, whether that could be funded through uh, transient room tax. So if those are, I mean, if, it, if a museum is uh, a site for a tourist, you know, then maybe it, you know, maybe maybe the museum comes under um, downtown revitalization that we're trying to do, right? Uh, so, so that you know, that's another one we could look at that ordinance and perhaps change right. it so that it gets more aligned with our priorities. Now, I, I think that I think that planning commission and budget are uh, have to be done a certain way. You can't really change those ordinances. I don't have a problem looking at them, but I think you know there's the state laws that regulate it that have basically told us this is this is how you have to establish right. those committees. But I, I I agree. I don't necessarily want to say if there's an ordinance that's off the table. I think it's part of the process of uh, realigning with our priorities to look at well what needs to be changed about this committee so that it, it is in alignment with the priority. So Tom. And and I've I've got no problem with looking at the the ordinances, but, I, but again, even there, I want to be, I don't want to get into this ordinance and then hash over the whole, the whole ordinance. Let's, if there, as we're saying, the, the, the committee member is an issue, let's, let's talk about it as an issue, and, and uh, um, for me, if, if, they, if they can keep the ordinances intact, as much as we keep them intact, keep them intact. If, if, if there's a good enough argument to change the ordinance, you get something specific about the ordinance, yeah. But let, you know, let's have a discussion. I have no problem having a discussion about it. But I don't, it takes a while to change, to change ordinance. So I don't want to go wholesale and 
opinions and I want to be very specific about what we're doing and and then not start going, well, what about this in the audience or what about that? And let's just, you know, yeah. there's some specific things and, and work on those specific things. So, okay. Other comments about that? Could we then, we've, we've talked about finance. Are there any other thoughts on the finance priority and, and how that, how we would realign committees? Gail's suggesting look at the feasibility of a, of a finance committee. We've also suggested look at um, temporary or task force type committees for specific things. But nothing to be created right now. Well, no changes up, to be made right that's now. That's up to you. Okay. I'm just getting input. Yeah. So then the next priority is economic development. Um, and our, our number one item under that is revitalize downtown core area. Um, and we already have in place a task, uh, economic development task force. Uh, we haven't really decided how we want to fill that. Um, it, it was two members of the council, um, previous council had decided to put a third person on it. There's also members of the Port Commission. They've re they're reworking how they're doing that. But in the meantime, there's been a, that creation of a steering committee for, for, um, for downtown revitalization. So. Do we need both? Both what? There's economic development and the downtown revitalization group. Uh, that's a good question. I I think that there's a it can, I I would like to see my, my vision would be that the economic development task force is a joint meeting of the port and the city council. So I think that is the area where our interests and the port's interests coincide and where we have the most potential for cooperation, the most potential for growth for the community. Um, so I, I guess I look at, and I don't think that happens every month. I think that happens, you know, probably quarterly. But it's a way to, to establish jointly what our goals are for economic development task force, or economic development. So they can, they can share our, their concerns, what, what their visions are. We can share our concerns, what our vision is. And we can move forward together as, a, as, a, as two boards. So, I think that, but I also think we've got this steering committee working on, on uh, downtown core area, which is one of our number one economic priorities. Okay. I would like to see us find a way to put resources behind that, that movement. Which that? The downtown core, the okay. downtown revitalization. To me, that's, I mean, I think there's a lot of things on this list for economic development. That's, we know we've got a downtown. It's there. It's something we can always work on. It's not, it's not something ephemeral that's, you know, that if we can get a governor to sign off, if we can get a Department of the Interior to sign off, maybe we have a resort. Or if there's a water transfer, if a multinational corporation wants to put a facility in our port park, those are, there's a lot of ifs surrounding a lot of things on that economic development. We hope those are going to happen, but we know we've got a downtown. We know we've got property, we know we've got um, buildings, we've got businesses functioning. If we can start putting our resources together with the port, cooperation with, with community members to, to really build that as, as an economic engine, um, then we've got something we know we can work on. So I, I'd like to see us start to, to align behind that. And I, to me that's, you talk about, I mean the museum I think fits into that, like Gail mentioned earlier. I think. Um, I think tourism is one of the big things for economic development, um, and I'd like to see I'd like to see us get get behind uh, get behind that movement for downtown revitalization, and I think that getting our our uh, our, our tourism committee efforts aligned with that would be a good first step, and would would really get start to start to get even more momentum in that movement. Jeff? Support that 100%, the idea of doing that. The other thing that came to mind was when we were at the opening for the uh, port building, having discussions with Stevenson's mayor and their manager, 
we as a group were informal or formal talk with our partners across the river, so we have a still a regional approach for economic development for us in this region, too. I think it's more of an informal process, but we have to keep that in mind, that we have our neighbors across the river that we are tied to what goes on, and having including some of those in that discussion, or at least having an, that informal process, too. I just want to throw that out there, but it, it spurred a conversation I had with the mayor. Yeah. Um, <coughs> well, one question I have about this the downtown development <coughs> group. Mm -hmm. Is that a task force or a committee? Well, whatever it is. It's a, I think it's called the Steering Committee, Downtown okay. Revitalization Steering Committee. All right. And, which and came out of a, a joint, the, our joint right. meeting with the board. Right. And, and there were all kinds of things thrown up on the board, and I, I think I understand the, the intent and scope. But for, for that group to accomplish anything, there's going to have to be some money available, even for the simplest things. I mean, I talked about painting. You know, how do they get funded? I think that's yeah, that's a that's a good question. I think that's a question that that the that the steering committee will be looking at. Uh, I think it's important for us to be thinking about that. Um, I think it's important for the port to be thinking about that. Um, the community should be funding, in my mind, should be funding that that group. I think there's. I don't think we have to say they, that, you know, just throw money at it. I think no. there's, it's a, it's a volunteer group, and I, and I think there's some, some committed vol volunteers that are really interested in giving their time and, and doing a cleanup. That's that's uh, what do they call that? Sweat equity. You put, you know, you. But but you're right. I mean, even if we were to get, you know, gallons of paint donated for a painting party, you got to buy the paint brushes. You know. Yeah. Turpentine or whatever. So wouldn't wouldn't uh, I'm sorry, Tom. I just finish here. Wouldn't tourism funding qualify to support some of those targeted goals? Yeah, and it's it's back to the same issue yeah, okay. that uh, that we talked about earlier. You know, I I think it's a question. I think that the, certainly some of those goals absolutely um, fit in there. Um, as as for some of the you know. The details of parsing out what the different words in the, the statutes mean, you know, I can interpret I, I, it for I, you, but you yeah, can't count on I, my I, interpretation. And same thing for everyone that doesn't okay. have a, that isn't qualified to answer a legal question. But, but yeah, I, I, I think that's a good idea, and I, I mean, I'm encouraged to see that a lot of uh, tourism committee members are already right. involved in that and have, have been attending those those meetings, and some of them are even on the okay. um, the steering committee, but. I sure would like to see us, like I said, get those resources behind the downtown revitalization, since that is our economic development goal. Yeah, I think uh, Paul had a, uh, on the steering committee, there was a, uh, a meeting coming up, um, they haven't scheduled yet, but I think Moffin and um, Pilot Rock, I think, have some ideas that, uh, you know, it doesn't take a lot of money, you know, that, that what worked for Moffin and um, but I think the other night we had a good meeting, I think, uh, between the two, and also the input from the uh, merchants in town. I mean, I think, you know, that re yeah. that's really helpful, too. You know, the, the store, they have a, uh, you know, a lot of times you don't hear from them, and, and uh, they had a chance to, you know, speak up. I thought that was a pretty positive, you know, meeting, you know. So, so the, the steering committee, is, is that a committee on its own? Was it, what, was it, what was it created from? It was created from the meet. Were you at that? The December fifth, we had the the joint meeting of the port and the city council. Okay, so that whole group of things. Right. Yeah. Pulled out of that, okay. We did a visioning okay. exercise, so and, and then the and then we we, you know, right. Paul had his threat that the sheriff wasn't going to let people yeah. out until they signed up. And okay, yeah. so then, so then it's, that seems to me that's where we we have created something. The port and yeah, have, have created yeah. something. So that's where the questions do have. Right? All those questions should come in. For one, you've got the port and, port and city has their, not every month, every few months or whatever, they have their meeting of getting together and coming over with where they, kind of where they have it, where they want to go. And I think that that should be, where they come from that should be presented to the steering committee. Like this is where we kind of want to head. And now steering committee, we need you. And along with that, Along with that, that should be in that, should come out. How do we fund things? What are we after? How do we, 
with every with, with both those groups there. All those questions should come up in that. So, so again, this whole thing is is an organized process that everybody's involved in. We're all we're all on board. We don't have somebody out there doing this and somebody out there doing that. But we we want to make sure that whatever we do here is we're all on the same page, moving ahead. Sure. And, and that's all that should be part of it. The yeah. Funding, how we do that, should be discussed in that meeting, and then. And then convey to the steering committee, maybe the steering committee's out looking. They can be more often. We're meeting every three months, sure. but they may meet every week, right. or a few days, whatever, yeah. to, to, to um, push ahead our, our agenda. Right. Yeah. And, and one of the things that, if you, that, that the steering committee is going to be looking at is subcommittees on, you know, one is going to be on logistics, like a group that's going to, you know, get the, buy the paintbrushes or get the paint or, or the weed eaters or whatever it is for the, for the cleanups. And, and there's going to be another group that's involved with events and it's called the promotion committee, right? The marketing and, and events and things like that. And so, to me, that's, uh, that's what I think traditionally, at least part of what the tourism committee has done. And I really see that fitting better in the, in this joint movement, right. community wide movement of economic development focused on downtown revitalization. I, I, I agree, and that's where, I mean, why, why wouldn't we look at integrating those two? Yeah, I, I, the downtown revitalization and tourism committee. I mean, there, there's a lot, to, to me it seems like there's a lot of overlap, and I don't know if there's a need for both committees one, I think it would help maintain effective communication. Two, it would help provide some funding. Yeah, and I, that's, that's the way I see it too. I think that the, the interests are the same, but when you have a, a tourism committee, it's, it's sort of operated on a, in a, on a separate plane when what we're trying to do is bring the community together, port and city cooperating on this downtown revitalization effort. So, yeah. I don't know what the reason why we wouldn't want to do that is. I, Tom? Well, my only thought on it is the, is I think tourism's main focus, their main focus and the, and the main amount of what their money goes to is to promote it. So they're more promotional for it. Is, is what most of their money goes to is promote what's going on in Cascade Lots here, not necessarily the, the actual brick and mortar, and I think maybe some of their stuff is, is looking at doing. They're, they're not as much into the brick and mortar as they are trying to get, trying to uh, promote people here. So they're, um, they're not out on the street cleaning things up, painting things and all that. They're, they're trying to, you know, they're putting together web, web, they're putting together websites, they're putting together brochures and all that. That's kind of their biggest thing. Uh, yeah, I, I just remember from the discussion that you know, at a higher level, it seemed like the whole intent of that group was to encourage uh, people coming to Cascade Locks, one, by cleaning it up, expanding services, and, you know, promoting the town in, in a way to, to encourage growth. That's where I see some of the overlap. Yeah, and, and I agree. I, th I think promotion is part of if you look at the um, what what we put up on the on the wall there in that, that economic development task force meeting, that's that's one chunk of what we got to do is we got to promote the town. I think that steering committee is going to do that. I th I would like to see us since it's our one of our number one goals. I'd like to see us get behind that effort and um, and a, a, you know what work has been done already. Get more, get even more so coordinated with the port and pointed toward revitalizing downtown through promotions. But but the other thing that you have to remember is uh, the the ORS that that specifies how TRT dollars can be used right. specifically does talk about brick and mortar projects, and that's one of the things uh, I think Portland used their TRT dollars to fund the convention center. That's what they're for. Uh, yeah, what it yeah is right. For well, it's promotions and 
and brick and mortar. So there's right. there's mm -hmm. there's possibility to do a lot of those different things. For example, one of the things that was mentioned was, hey, it rains a lot in Cascade Locks. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a facility for tourists to get out of the rain? And that came up at that meeting, right? So that's that ties right in with the downtown revitalization as well as with the goals of of, uh, of what we've set and how we're expected to, to spend transient room dollars. So, anyway. Well, I'm not sure whether I'm not sure whether, both, whether it says to make shelters and all that. I think I think I think it does kind of focus you in on a convincing center. That's what they the, the towns were. I think that's what they, they went after more convinced. They they upped it and they they changed the, the percentage of it so that people could actually come up with enough money to to build these facilities. Because they so they looked at convention centers as, as things to bring people to your town. I haven't seen it for a while, but I think it was visitor facilities. It was a little little generic. It could it could be a rain shelter. It could be a convention center. In those kind of details, yeah. you know, yeah. probably yeah. beyond yeah. our ability yeah. to interpret. But sure. but it's it's something to consider, sure. and and it's to me another reason why getting this kind of alignment with our mm -hmm. priorities with what the port exists to do, with what we want to accomplish, is makes sense. So I'm gonna suggest that a, a good step would be for us to have a meeting with the tourism committee next month um, and talk about how they see their role fitting in with, um, with the, the steering committee and the, the downtown revitalization effort. And, and hopefully reaching an agreement on the um, best way to move forward. So is that something that we'd like to see at a council meeting next month? Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, are there, is there anything else within uh, economic development that we should talk about with, with some of our committees? I think Planning Commission came up once. As, a, as an idea, have a planning commission member on the, the task force. Yeah, I, I talked about that. I think it's important that we do just because of the land use laws and what our master plan is for the downtown, to have that knowledge base go to that and be a part of that discussion. And we do have an opening on the planning commission, so um, maybe that's something we can bring up in the interviews. Um, so, anything else on economic development with regard to committees? Um, so, communicating and, and rebuilding community trust is um, is a fourth priority. Um, how does that fit with the existing committees? Do we need a committee? Um, to work on that, or is that something that we we keep as as a council? So we keep the council. Yeah. Yeah. Well, huh. I think well. the things you're doing there is helping that. And so the discussion you're having there is so that it's basically helping that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so enhancing infrastructure is the next priority, uh, including things like um, pavement condition study. Alternative, develop alternative energy systems, um, the master plans for sewer, water, um, updating the electric rates, the tier two rates, um, electric master plan, and everyone's favorite work order system made the list too. So um, what do we see there for uh, aligning a, a committee with that priority. I don't know that the City Services Committee has any specific direction from this council. Where are you at? Seven? Yeah. 
So you're looking at resolution uh, 1222. Yeah, 1222. Um, mayor's committees. Mm -hmm. That's not a. Um, that's not an ordinance. It's called a list of things. I think that uh, resolution 1222 kind of muddies the water on. How committees are created, but that's it's just a resolution we have. Yeah. Some are created by ordinances, some are not, right. but all of them are listed here. But that seems to follow kind of the questions you were. So were the committee will uh, purpose of the, the city services committee would be to advise city council regarding matters of public works, electric, cemetery, and emergency services department. May also be requested to advise council on utility rate analysis and recommendations on the budgets for operation and capital improvements. Can that follow the it, I think it might follow some of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the question then is do we keep city services committee because it aligns with those? Or do we look like what we did with the finance? Do we look at when each of those issues comes forward, like tier two rate study or um, uh, sewer master plan, do we create um, specifically defined timeline task forces that address that one particular issue? I, I'd be more in favor of task forces with the specific time frame that Tom related to, rather than have committees standing by. Mm -hmm. yeah. For an event, we can create them as needed yeah. because right. the other advantage I think that allows is when you create the committee, you can choose people that might have specific background experience or knowledge related to the specific topic. You know, I mean, with standing committees, you get a broad base, but you don't always want a broad base. You may want some targeted knowledge on particular issues. So then, um, is that something also we'd like to bring in the members of the City Services Committee to meet with the Council and just kind of express that and get their input and reach some kind of agreement on those? I, I don't know much about the City Services Committee, but, uh, or if they ever met or have met or do meet, but I, I have to defer. My attitude is, you know, we, arrive at a decision and communicate it. I don't know if I'm going to hear anything different from the members that's going to change my opinion. According to this, they're all terminated December 31st, 2011. Well, that's, that, that's, I don't know why, that wasn't changed in the report. Well, there was was that wasn't changed in the report. Oh, okay. The committee Which one are you looking at? I think he's got the old He's order. looking uh, at the, the report. report. Okay. The committee list is is 2013, which is what was said at the last meeting. Oh, okay. Well. Who's correct? That's, uh, okay, so that is, this is more yeah, today than this one. one. That's the current one there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if, in, in my mind, unless it's, a, I'm just trying to be efficient, but <laughs> would be to communicate it to the city, to, to the committee members, and if they have questions, let them come to council. What's your thought on that, Tom? Um, well, the idea was <laughs> communicate to the committee that we're more interested in, in addressing those things it's through task good. force, and then if they have questions about that, okay. invite them to come address, address the council. Yeah. You'd rather do it that yeah. way. Other comments on that? Okay. Um, so, um, the, let's see here. Then the last last priority was organizational development, um, which includes things like uh, study to determine staff workload, um, review and strengthen fundamental systems and policies and look into the need for a deputy recorder and city planner. 
Um, do we see a need for a committee to address that? I, 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 I don't. I kind of see those as peculiar to the staff and city administrator developing a recommendation more than citizen input initially. Okay. Other comments on that? I feel okay. the same way. Okay. Okay. Same as you. Okay. So that brings us to the end of our priorities. And then we've talked about a plan for um, budget committee. We've talked about a plan. Finance. Oh, yeah, the budget committee. Sorry. Budget committee. I'm talking about existing committees. I, exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry. We've talked about, uh, well, we'll just back up. We've talked about our, our preference for creating um, temporary task force to deal with specific issues rather than, as Gail said, a committee in waiting waiting for a topic. Um, we've, also t we've also addressed uh, budget committee and, and their role, and I think most of the meeting tonight was about that. Um, we've talked about tourism, we've talked about city services. Um, we haven't talked about planning commission, and I, I would su just suggest that we go through the list of committees right. um, <coughs> using this this document that, have okay. that lists the committees and the members, um, and then just kind of address what we the need we see for different different committees and, that we haven't already talked about, and and how to how to move forward. So, city council, we've got budget. Is there any discussion on the budget committee? Wait a minute. What, uh, let me catch up with page. Are, are you on the we're, first? We're right here. Okay. Yeah. First page. Okay. First page. Yeah. I'll just mention now while I'm thinking about it, I think it's something for us to come back and talk about later, is a process for making appointments. For the task force, we've developed a process, the public safety task force, we've developed a process. Um, we may want to talk about that for vacancies that are, that are coming up soon or that already exist, but we'll come back to that later. So other discussion on budget. Yeah. I think we're, we have a state law that that established. The next one on my list is charter review. Um, all of those positions um, terminate uh, in a couple days into this year. Uh, is a charter review something that we want to um, do at this time? Or should we just let eliminate that committee? My, I, I'd eliminate it. Eliminated. So I'm not hearing anyone say they want to review the charter. <laughs> well, well, I, I don't get, go ahead. I don't think you don't have to eliminate the committee. You can just not fill those positions until we feel a need. If there ever comes a point in time to fill those positions and have a review of the charter, if we need to do that, leave that committee there. But just the positions open and we deal with it that way as needed. But, but why have a committee if it's not staffed? Why have it's not built? Oh. This kind of seems like one of those things that Tom was talking about where it like started out and then there wasn't an end to it. So yeah. they just sat here forever. Uh, you only well, there was an end to that particular thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. we, we made a report, we brought it to so the it's, council. It's, it's not done by decided not to act. Uh, yeah, so it's not done by ordinance, it's done, it's done by ordinance, not resolution. That committee is not, not created by a resolution or an ordinance. Oh, it, was, okay. it was appointed by a mayor. So there's not a process that we have to worry about that's going to encumber it <coughs> if, you had well, to, if you had to redo if you had to establish one again. The way I look at it is you'd follow your council rules, which the mayor would create a committee, give it a, a purpose, okay. yeah. yep. right. bill it, and okay. give it a timeline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that one. Um, so city services <coughs> is the next one on the list. Um, we've talked about that already. Um, eliminating it. Eliminating it. We'll need to, you know, address it through resolution because there's a resolution that created it. That's fine. That's back to what uh, what Jeff was talking about with the process. <coughs> so we'll have to we'll have a report back. Um, comp plan review committee. Mm. 
that's I'm another one that the um, looks like the term is up in a couple days. I'd, I'd eliminate it. And yeah, I, I've and asked that's this question. the same thing. You wouldn't need it until you need it. Right. Yeah, when we when we want to do a comp plan review, we create the comp plan review committee. Right. Uh, we just briefly discussed museum um, and that's another one where I feel like there's some alignment with what we're trying to accomplish by um, working together with the port. Um, I'm not sure what that means for that committee, <coughs> but I wonder if that's something where we should invite them to, uh, to a meeting like we're doing with tourism just to talk about our goals and, and hear from them on what their goals are and how, how it aligns with what the community is trying to accomplish in, in downtown. Yeah, either that or do the same thing and just let them know, let them come if they got questions. Well, that's what the ordinance would There's an ordinance that would have to be, yeah, would have to be. Well, right. but that's a mechanic. Either way, you'd have that, to. That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why you guys are so worried about whether there's an ordinance or not. There's just a administrative procedure, you know, I mean, there's nothing. The, the, the bigger question is, is it something that we're ready, we're ready to just eliminate, or is it something that we're, we'd like to have further discussions on? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think we were talking about eliminating um, that committee, because they're, yeah. I think these are the people that kind of keep it going. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. Um, yeah. As long as we're, as long as we've got a museum, to staff it and care for those artifacts and things that are in the building. Are most of the people that are leaving, are they going to renew? Are they, uh, um, I see your... I, I would say so. Well, that's what your, your term is up. Yeah. Yeah. Are is they going to renew? <laughs> so, so you, you've been on, you were on this committee? Mm -hmm. So what do they do? They go over um, things that are coming that are being given to the museum, uh, directions that they kind of go over how many people have been showing up, how, uh, oh, okay. how they're, okay. yeah, they, they, they go over what's been going on to, and then monitoring what's there and, and how to take care of it. How okay. often do they meet? Not very often, very few, very few nights. Okay. I'll just put it out there. My preference is to. But there are all people that are really committed to this. Yes. Okay. So people are really committed to the museum. <coughs> okay. My, my preference would be to invite them to a council meeting to, to have that similar discussion about um, our effort to align with our uh, our core goals and our goals for revitalizing downtown and find out what role they, they see for themselves in that. Yeah. That, that's and if a there's a need to, to address. Um, the ordinance and, and redo that ordinance or um, you know, how the budget's created or things like that, um, that could come out of that, that joint meeting. Okay. So and I'd probably put that as a, um, uh, at a different meeting after, subsequent to the, the meeting with the tourism. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any uh, objection to that? No. Okay. That takes us to Parks and Rec. Uh, we haven't just discussed Parks and Rec. It is a committee created by ordinance. Is there, Marianne or Kathy, could you give us an overview of how that operates? Or are you ready how to do that? This guy, I'm sort of blindsiding you with that request. But. They meet monthly. They get You guys get copies of their minutes. Um, they run the rec program in the gym down here. I think it's two nights a week. They have the kids come in for two hours, I think. You know, they can play, run around in the gym. During the summer, they have about a month-long program where they do some swimming and watch some movies. And that's about it. I mean, they do do, they try to do a like Halloween Carnival, they try to do, participate in that. It, 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 it kind of seems like they have ongoing discussions about 
uh, possible events and this and that, just from reading their minutes. They seemed engaged. Yeah, yeah. Easter egg hunt. Easter egg hunt. Pardon? The Easter egg hunt's another big one. Yeah. Oh, I so missed that. There's, there's also, it, it's, and there's some of these events and staffing are funded through the general fund. Right. Is that right? Yes, we pay for um, two of uh, uh, the um, activity directors, or activity uh, people. It's funded out of the general fund. And then are there other expenses for your, yes. your parks and rec events mm -hmm. that, are, that are also paid for out of the general fund? What was that last part? Also, that are also paid for out of the general fund. So when they ha have a Halloween carnival, they might have to buy prizes, so that's oh, I out see. of the general fund. I see. When they uh, do the, the, um, the Santa, um, okay. most of that was donated, but if they had to buy candy canes for Santa to have something, that would come out of that, that department's expense. Yeah, when you say the general fund, it comes out of their department expense. But it's in the general fund. I understood. I understood. Yeah. So, and then there's also a, d a discrepancy that I think is important to point out that program directors um, are, are not necessarily these committee members. They're actually paid volunteers for the city that, that right. are not connected to the appointment process for this committee. We've had members of this committee fill those positions, those volunteer positions, but they get paid for their time when they run the, right. the events here. Um, but they're not necessarily, there's, it's, there's, a, there's a difference between those two positions, the committee and the program director. So. A except some of the people are the same. The people are the same. Okay, yes, I just. But they don't have to be. Right, understood. Yeah, okay. So then the other question for me, a couple issues with this one. I, I think since I've been on council, we haven't had seven people on on this committee. There have always been vacancies. Um, so that, that just kind of leads me to the natural conclusion that maybe we should redo this ordinance and change the number of people. And because when you have a bigger group, it makes it harder to deal, you know, procedurally for um, sure. quorum requirements and things. but. But in general, I think you're more efficient with a smaller group of people. Um, and if there were more interest, more people interested, I'd want more people involved. But it doesn't appear that there that there is. Over the and now you, you guys have different experiences on council. I don't know if you remember that, but you've been on longer than I have. So maybe. Well, I was just going to say. I think last week Gail was telling me a smaller group was better. <laughs> and this week you're that's telling my, us that. That's my bias. <laughs> He's changed. <laughs> so. Again, I, I don't see why we take the time to mess around and change anything out of it. Because if they don't have enough, they don't, if they don't have enough people, they don't have enough people. I mean, if, if they're working okay and it's getting by for them, if it hasn't become an issue for them, be able to conduct their meetings and do other things. It doesn't seem to me we need to take the time to, to go through some process to take down them. Okay. Other thoughts on that? The, the other having a spot open is if there's somebody of interest in the community, they could be on the committee without, without kicking somebody else off. Mm -hmm. I'm not hearing any support for the idea of changing that ordinance yet, Jeff. I'm kind of the opinions to turn it down to the bottom. Okay. So, Mark and well, Gail? Well, the, the five, it looks like they're, they're on there for, you know, one to two years. Um, you know, like Randy was saying, maybe one vacancy, you know, maybe somebody might want to come in, you know, later on that's really, um, you know, that wants mm. to be on there. If there's someone, yeah, if there's someone committed that wants to get involved yeah. in Parks and Rec, they don't necessarily have to be appointed to the committee. Right. They can show up at the meetings, they can volunteer at the events. Mm -hmm. I don't think you have to keep a vacancy open. Right. It just doesn't seem like. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. So that puts it at four of us that are 
Yeah, but uh, keep it at five. Yeah. Making that, making that. Right. Sense. Somebody wants to volunteer. The other question I have about this is the park side of it, and since I've been on council, I haven't seen um, this this group too much with parks. We've got um, a completely undeveloped park, Tooth Rock Park. We've got Gateway Park. Is there any interest in uh, having this uh, this committee address better use or enhancements to our parks? My, my guess is this group's focused on the recreational side of it. Um, I think it would be a public works or a public services if, if we were going to develop a park. It would be, it wouldn't be that group. It would be somebody more geared that could tap into an architect, could tap into public works. Yeah, I think that's just an old, old, old title for the committee. Mm -hmm. So then maybe we're changing it to just a recreation committee. Yeah, or babysitting. Uh, well, they do a, adult recs, adult recreation yeah. programs. Yeah, that's bingo. That's bingo. <laughs> no, it's and that's lions. Oh, do they? They do field trips. Or they have. Have in the past, but I don't. Dinner at dinner. Okay. okay, people aren't around anymore. They have dinner at their house. <laughs> Okay, um, so we've got a couple items on that for future action. Planning Commission, um, there's a vacancy there now. Uh, we've talked about maybe having a Planning Commissioner be involved with Economic Development Task Force or Downtown Steering Committee. Um, and to me, this brings us back to that the discussion of earlier. How would you, is, is there an interest in um, creating a process, establishing a process for filling these committees, um, similar to what we've done with Public Safety Task Force, where there's a standardized application and an interview process. It's been done that way with Planning Commission before. Um, last time we did an appointment to Planning Commission, it was just, if you're interested, write your name down, maybe in a letter, and then the mayor makes the decision and appoints you. So there's there's been two different models. Yeah. Jeff? I think it's important for that process, and I think we should do it with all the committees to do that. Yeah. This gives a bit of temperature gauge of what goes on, and that just kind of formalizes our recommendations to you, or whoever sits on the committee. This is who you have to pick to be part of this. You have this question and answer session right there, instead of just the letter and Other thoughts on that process, Randy? Well, I think it, I, I agree. It helps, you know, our, whatever our goals are, that can get communicated as part of the part of the interview process. Um, the only other the only other thought I had, and don't mention any names, but I have a Stevenson, Washington address for a planning commission member. Is that or is that from the third one down? <coughs> Is that accurate? Yeah, that's her mailing address. She but she lives here. Lives here, but that, that was her mailing address. Okay. Okay. I think when when she um, was appointed to the planning commission, she had just moved to Cascade Locks and hadn't changed. I don't know if it's changed since. Okay. But that would be. That's fine. It has that's fine. A, I think people would change. Yeah. I think it ha might have something to do with the business or something. Not quite sure, but. Okay. She physically lived here, but that's her mailing, where okay. she got her mail. I, just was, I would assume our committee people need to live in town. But. Hey, just a point of clarification for me. When you guys talk about, you know, filling positions and filling out an application, does the whole city council interview? I mean, it used to be just, you know, the, the mayor would kind of make a recommendation to council based upon whatever arts and sciences existed. And uh, it was either, you know, usually approved. Right. Yeah, the, and the charter creates that. The, the mayor appoints um, people to committees. What's that? 
What is the resolution? Yeah. Resolution what? All things. Yeah, that the mayor. Right. So, right. so the city council is not going to be interviewing all the candidates for committee. Well, that's how we've chosen to do it for the public safety task force. That's that's the process we set up a week ago. Um, we, we decided to come in on but a Saturday. But how about these, is that, I mean, I, that's what I'm trying to find, is that an exception or is that? Well, I think we're just, we're, di we're discussing that right now. Okay. What, what's your thought on it? I don't want to interview. You don't want to do that? No. Okay. When, now, when I, when we, I talked about the planning commission, um, in a previous appointment process was that uh, three members from council conducted interviews made a recommendation to the mayor, and the mayor made the appointment. Okay, so it wasn't the whole council. It wasn't the whole council. It was, it was a, you could call it a subcommittee. It was a, it was a public meeting. Yeah. I think there was two. I remember there was two uh, the planning commission. I wasn't involved in it when you went on the planning commission, so I don't know if there were just two people. But it could be, it could be just the, just me. I could do the interviews. Could be uh, a couple of you, three of you, make a recommendation. Okay. What's your thought on that, Mark? Um, I think the uh, uh, input from us, and you would make the decision. That's I like that. Okay. Well, well, I think it, I think it is. I think it's a tough one for me. It's a tough one because there are, there are some. I think there are some committees that you want to be a little more vetted on and things committees do not you don't necessarily have to be as vetted on when you do it. Yeah. Well which ones do you think should be more vetted? Well I think the the whole the whole life plan and the fixed control agenda. Not to say they're not all important, but I think there are there are some that you want to um maybe get a, a certain specific person. So, well, we could agree to, you know, designate a couple of counselors that aren't us <laughs> <laughs> to do the interviews <laughs> and make a recommendation. But the other is, uh, I agree with Tom, there's some that are less, less important. And, and some of these committees will go wanting for committee members. So if you have one person apply for two spots, are you going to interview them or just appoint them? So I, I think there's a scaling that would have to take place, you know, at the time. You'd so if you have an application, and it's a standardized application, and um, the policy is if there's more applications than vacancies, that you conduct interviews. Could could be that. Somebody way. does. Yeah. yeah. I, interviews will be conducted. I, I like the idea that council, there's multiple people interviewing, because it can go... You could have a mayor, and they, they obviously won't last very long, but because they're only in there for two years, but they can just appoint the cronies. And, and that has happened here. And I, I think it's better to spread it out, that, um, that there's more an open process. Yeah. And I think ultimately you can't get away from, unless you change, unless we do a, a charter review and change the charter, you can't get away from the part of the charter that says the, the mayor, mayor makes the appointments right. subject to the approval of council. But at least a process that, that includes more people. And I, I definitely agree with that. I'd be consistent with that. So 
I think we'll take those recommendations, probably come back with something for, for an action as well. Okay. Okay. Um, and that puts us down to, uh, we, did, we talked about tourism already. We have right. a plan for that. Okay. Right. So, um, any other comments for discussion on boards and commissions? Okay, um, hearing none, that moves us to our next item on the agenda, which is adjournment. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Gail, seconded by Randy. Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain abstentions? Yeah. None? Motion carries. Sorry about being late, um, I spaced it. <laughs> hey, thanks for, thanks for